How's it going, people? Welcome back to the show and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all good and well out there. The original six are back. I had a lot of questions last night about why the original six weren't live last night, but you know, we had this scheduled in already, so I brought the extra show to you guys straight after the Leeds Man City fixture was finished. So make sure if you haven't already, make sure you check out the official Big Six channel. Link in the description where you search it on YouTube. I'm sure it'll come up somewhere towards the top of the list and check out Big Six Extra. But we are here, the original six. Big up Hugh, big up Saeed, Grizz, Tobes and Matisse. All channel links are in the description below, people. Love for getting the Big Six channel to 20k. Every single one of you subscribed and supported along the way. We made 20k just before the new year starts. So big up you guys and girls out there supporting the thing. And hopefully we bring you more content 2023, bigger and better. And hope you guys all enjoy it. Let's get this channel right here to 75k. I'm about 150 away from 75k. So if we can make that happen, please, let's make it happen before the new year begins. Let's get Hugh up to 5k. And let's get the rest of the channels up as well. Support the man then, people. All channel links in the description below. Saeed, Grizz, Toad, Matisse, Skull, Fuggery, I'm sure... He's cooking away in the next few weeks with fixtures coming thick and fast. A lot of big six fixtures coming thick and fast. So the return of Skull Fuggery is imminent for one, two, maybe three of us over the next few weeks and in January. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but Run yeah, that guy, man. Run that guy. <laughs> you two have some sort of war of words going on online. I see you on Twitter. The bitch, and I'm, I'm tell him I said that, yeah. <laughs> Use that in one of his videos. So. Yeah, you probably will. You probably will, but. I don't care, man. It is what it is. It's all love, man. It's all love. Listen, and big up Manscaped, the sponsor. Like, if you've enjoyed all the new content coming thick and fast, then make sure you show some love to Manscaped. TB620 is the code for 20% off. There's a link in the description. If you go via that link, the discount should automatically be applied at checkout. If it's not, promo code TB620. Put that in and you'll get 20% off, people. So show some love to the sponsors as well. And yeah. Going to start the show by um, saying rest in peace to Pele, a legend of the game. Um, I got the news shortly before I was setting up to go live. Um, a name that's come up, you know, a lot recently as well, considering Messi's achievements in the World Cup and throughout his career and Pele's achievements in his footballing career. He was always considered the GOAT by many and one of the GOATs by everyone else. Um, so it's a sad day for football that he's passed now. Um I'm not sure if any, did, have any of us seen him play live. Well, I definitely haven't. No, no, nah, nah, not even me. No, there you go. But we all know that his stature in the game is up there with the very best. The records he has is up there with the very best. Some records won't be broken, um, especially that free World Cup record. I don't think I see. I don't see anyone beating that free no. World Cup record. I'll be honest no. with you. Um, but yeah, rest in peace to Pele, man. Uh, thoughts and prayers are out with you know his family and friends obviously during this dark time and i hope everyone else is good and well out there too um because yeah as always sorry let me just say the super chat as always um yeah we want to we want to make sure the people out there are good as well our supporters are good as well mentally physically all of that so i do see comments here and there coming throughout telling us how important the big six has been um, through dark times for them. So I hope everyone's blessed out there and ready for the new year. And um, if you need a change, then make that change happen in the next few days, people. Not that you need a new year to make change, but sometimes people attach it to a target or, you know, something changing and, you know, New Year's resolutions and all of that. So big up everyone in the chat. Let me save these super chats as I come in. And let's head over to Grizz first, because Grizz, good away win. But away win aside, some good business, it seems, in the tran well, I say in the transfer window. The transfer window hasn't even opened yet. And you lot co got Cody Gatpo under the under your belts, another attacking option. Um, interesting to see what happens when everyone's fit, which is everyone's question, but you're moving like the big club you are. Um, Diaz out with an injury for a good few months, to say the least. And obviously Jota facing his own injury problems. Gatpo's come in. Under the noses of United, and so we'll get Saeed's opinion on it. But Grizz, let's start with you, man. What do you make of it first and foremost? Overjoyed. Big boy moves. Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be careful. No, man, man can't speak for more than two seconds without getting interrupted. Man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, boy. Oh, shit. Here uh, we shit. go again. Here we go again. <laughs> you, see that, you see that meme that comes on the other? Yeah. The nights come out like... 
<laughs> is that how you look going on? Um, I think Turkish set it up real nice for me, to be honest with you, because he said, because he talked about the injuries, and then as because of a result of injuries, needs must. Um, I think it's very, very out there that I didn't rate the guy. Um, I think I was seen on Saeed's channel mostly, I think it was. Was it on here as well, where I said, uh, um, Gak, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Gak, what is it now? That's a belter, I'm telling you, that's a belter. And Gak, Gak, go, Gak, go. But then I hear on Saturday night that we've hijacked the move. I WhatsApp Saeed. I WhatsApp the group, didn't I, as well? And I said, yeah. you, and, you, and you were like, yo, shut up. I said, you hear man? Can't believe it. I'm gonna have to change my tune. So I'm gonna have to back him because now it's Gak Yo. <laughs> my brother. Shameless. Shameless, man. Shameless. My brother. Adorable. Come through in it. What are you, what are you telling me? Me and you, long time. Long time. <laughs> we go way back. We go way back, way back, man. People, come on. You scout it. But um, but yeah, I was shocked when uh, when I found out that we're going for him. Um, I wasn't allowed to put it out on social media as such. But uh, on my channel, people were saying, can you tell us if we're signing Gakpo, twirl your moustache? So I just started twirling my moustache. I said, yeah, bro, we're getting Gakpo, you know? So it's wild. It's wild the way it happened. But... Well, be honest, just... hmm? You know when you put in the WhatsApp group, because you put in the Big Six WhatsApp group a, a good 24 hours before it happened, and I just looked there and I said, another nice one, Chris, another name that you're saying you're interested in. But this one's happened. This one went over the line within 24 hours. I thought to myself, right, I don't know, man. No Maybe. one had it. No one had it. Have to get no, you, but you, can, you can understand the Chris because you have a bit of a reputation for linking every player in world football with <laughs> Liverpool Football Club. No, I've given you two names, three names I've given you, and Nunes. Let me say the other through. two. I've said Salah contract that's come through since I've known you lot. Before you lot, no, no, we had him. We had him. Yeah, no, no, Sanche was Sanche fucked us up, but Mbappe talked to us. I said we've been talking to Mbappe, and he admitted he's been talking to us. No one believed that we're even talking to Mbappe, that we're even in for Mbappe. So shut up. But but <laughs> but but um, obviously everyone's waiting for the big one, Jude. But I told you, look, like, no one had Gakpo. Gakpo was nailed on for United. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows United were nailed for him. So, look, my state, my my attitude towards Gakpo is uh, the same in terms of his ability, what I think of him as a player. But I'm a Liverpool supporter. Uh, and so, therefore, now that he's a Liverpool player, I have to support him. Doesn't mean I have to rate him. Like, I'm sure none of you, I'm sure all of you lot don't rate every single player in your team or squads. There's players that we don't rate. It nope. doesn't have to be like that, but we have to support them. And if he proves me wrong, you already know the line. You already know the line. Football's a humbler. Is a humbler. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm a, I'm a winner either way. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I, I just, I don't know, man. Like, I got messages like I came in the chat yesterday to just to say Gakpo in the big six extra. And then people said, yo, and I didn't realize like it rubbed up a few people the wrong way. Because apparently before that, like certain people by the name of culture scam were, were calling me a fraud and stuff like Grizz is the biggest fraud. Like I want to know what he means by fraud. What does fraud mean in his language? Because obviously he speaks a few languages. So what what does it mean? What did he mean by that fraud? Like fraud what? Like then you're a shy talker. Know. Yeah, exactly. What did he mean by that? Like like because I changed my tune on a player, I didn't. Because then I watched it back, and he goes, "Man, like Grizz was um, cussing him down, and now he's bigging him up." I haven't bigged him up anywhere. I announced his signing, by the way. Like it was about to be announced. You need a blue tick, bro. I could I could buy one, but I ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could buy one, but I ain't like only, that. I ain't about blue ticks. I, yeah, I ain't about blue ticks, man. Because you know what I mean. But I couldn't understand why this brother, and he's a brother of mine still, regardless if he's a shit house. You know and I mean, he's still my brother. <laughs> he's my brother still, and he's calling me a fraud live on air. Like, yeah, Grizz is a fraud. Like, is it is it coming from a point of bitterness that the big dogs came knocking and say, yo, you know what I mean? Give me your goods. 
<laughs> and we just robbed them clean. And you just patted United them. down, yeah. You patted United down and took what's there. Who knows what happened? And that's why a man's sitting there calling next man a fraud who's certified G. I'm a certified G, bro. You're a top, top G. I'm a top <laughs> G, bro. You can't call be calling me fraud, man. You ain't got nothing on me. Now, I got receipts. Then suddenly, you know what happens in it? People start sending receipts of fraudulent behavior from, from the accusers. Oh. So I passed them to certain people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is good for the jugular. It's no, but bad. that's how I roll with it. No, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Everyone knows I'm a, I'm a, I'm a community guy. I'm a man of the community. Mm. You be nice just, to me. Just... Um, you be nice to me. You're my king. You be safe with me. I'm safe with you. Be not, you know, you be, you be angry with me. I'll be angry with you. You call me fraudulent. I'm gonna come for you. I'm gonna come for you. <laughs> And then he's and then he's telling me like yeah we're gonna we're gonna lock heads and we're gonna do this bro you I, I don't see you outside well, your I house need you're, a little you're, round table you're, for you two just you're sick verses for the he sits picture. in his bathroom robe at home right <laughs> doing streams all day night like how's he calling me a fraud I'm a supporter of Liverpool so I'm gonna go to the match and oh, support oh, shit. man oh, like shit. Shit. match day oh, hype match day oh, hype match day hype match day hype. No, 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 he's the one who, no, he's the one who needs to go somewhere, I'm the one who's going somewhere, so now that, now that Gakpo's become a Liverpool player, right, I'm going to go support him, I'm not going to sit in my bathroom at home, I'm going to go and support the brother, I'm going to say, yo, back, yo, my brother, so I'm going to applaud him, and tell him to show me something because Gakpo as a player don't really appeal to me. I think he's technically very good. He strikes a mean ball, but I don't think he's got any world class attributes apart from that. Mm. I think he can work in the system. I think he's a different type of forward that we got. But I'm gonna go and support him and watch him and see how he does now. So yeah, man, I'm not thrilled with it, but I'm very happy with the price, guys. Because remember, we were talking to uh, Saeed, we were talking 60 million, Man United might go for him, this and that. I was like, yo, he ain't no 60 million pound player. He ain't no 60 million pound player. But then we wrapped the deal up for 37 million. Now, in this day and age, a 23 And it rising to 50. Okay, maybe. Maybe I missed that bit out. <laughs> you missed that out. How convenient. You, you're, you're, so the, no you're the in the know. So how, 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 how you missed that one out? How you so missed that one? Because I always, because you know the add-ons, I, I love add-ons. You know why? Because they mean you've, you've, you've won something. They always usually involve win a Premier League or win a Champions League. And I always keep saying that same energy for every player. If we win the Champions League and, and, and Premier League, he'll have contributed. So it'll be worth it. But okay, let's just say rising to 50 million. You're rising to 37 million pounds we paid for him right now. You know what I mean? In this day and age, where Anthony's coming for 90 million, where no, I'm just saying, in it, other players, there's Greenish Nunes, 100 million. Bro. Nunes, yeah, you could put Nunes in that category. Mm. You know what I mean? A 23 year old who, apparently, by all accounts, done very well at the World Cup three goals, left foot, right foot, header. And his stats are insane. I know, and I know it's Dutch era divisie, and hella man come from there, like Kesman and all sorts. You know what I mean? But if he turns out to be the Dutch people that we bought from there, like a Quite uh, dirt, quiet uh, Suarez. Do you know what I mean? Do quiet. His name Kai. isn't as, fancy you as, you, as you make it. It's just dirt. It's just dirt. No, we tried to add Kai. some culture to the name. Tried to add come some Venezuelan. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on. I got Bella for quiet. You know what I mean? He scored that penalty that knocked you out in the Champions semi final. I got Bella. Who? Who? Dirt quiet. Chelsea, you don't know you wasn't supporting Chelsea then Shit. in this. I, don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, don't don't try. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you don't even know that. This is what I'm saying. You know, you know, you know, yeah, you, by then, Bruce. yeah, he wasn't supporting Chelsea then. Oh, but yeah, look, overall, I'm very happy with the overall structure of this the, the fee, how we got him in, because needs must, he wouldn't have been my number one choice. Absolutely, he wouldn't have been my number one choice. I openly admit that. But let's see what Klopp and Cole do with him. I think he's got attributes. Mm. Different attributes from the strikers and forwards we've got. Let's just say that. He's an interesting player. Intriguing. Intriguing. Much like Nunes was an interesting player. No. I've got, I've got Nunes, effective. I think this one's I'm, intriguing. Look at that front three, though. When you look at it, Salah, Nunes and Gakpo. That's Havoc FC now. Like, it's going to be like, in terms of technical ability, there's non, non-existent. But in terms of in-behind running, 
um, what do you call it, pressing intensity. No, that, no, no, that yeah, was, was, was very, that was that was very technical. technical. From what I see. That was like, technical. Win. Left foot, right foot. He looks like he's got a mean, a mean finish on him. So I think, I think Jurgen Klopp, personally, from what I've seen, um, Jurgen Klopp loves getting his hands on that type of forward yeah. for Liverpool and just saying, you know what, yeah, you're gonna be the guy who gets goals for me. He's done it with Jota. He did it with Mane. He did it with Salah. Did it with Firmino. I don't see why he can't do it with 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 um, with Gakpo. I just think. 50 million, it's a little on the high side, but at the same time, well, I mean, for someone who's played in the Eredivisie, but at the same time, Frankie De Jong was bought for how much? To Barca and what, what, what not. So, yeah, I think, I think it's a decent signing for Liverpool, man. I think, he'll, I think he'll do, he'll score goals for Liverpool. Maybe some of the other parts of his game might be lacking, but he'll score goals. But I wanted to ask you, Grizz, as well, because mm. it's a thing I've noticed as well, and I said it in the chat. Why are Liverpool going for these guys who can only play on the left or central areas. Mo Salah mm. plays every single game for Liverpool mm. and yet you signed in That's the last in the last say. 12 months you signed um Diaz, Nunes and now Gakpo. None my of these guys is a little bit of an overload from the right my, hand side. My, my 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 thinking when everyone's fit and in form and everything yeah my thinking is um uh, Nunes is going to be predominantly central. Bobby's in his last year. Yeah, so Nunes and Jota are going to be our primary central strikers. Yeah, uh, Diaz and Gakpo are going to be on the left. Yeah. Mohamed Salah is still strong. He don't like missing a second of football, so it's very difficult. He don't rotate or nothing. He's a machine. But fair play. But also, few games when Salah was rested, Diaz played on the right, and Diaz can do a very decent job on the right. And also, Gakpo played on the right for Holland in a couple of games as well. So he, he is flexible. He, he is flexible. He scored one right, from the right, but I don't. Yeah. I, don't I didn't really think he was. Like, I didn't really. See no, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. But Nunes and Jota are essentially going to be central. And, and that's how we're forward planning. Plus, we've got a young brother on on the right called Ben Doak, and he's sensational. Isn't he? He's, sens he's, he's sensational. I'm telling you now, 17 years old, and he's pure fire. So remember that name, Ben Doak. Did, did, did you mention Elliot? No, not on the wing. From and a forward. I, I see a lot of Liverpool Elliot. fans insinuating he's the uh, next in line. For nah, no, no, nah, not for me anyway. They can. No, more, they 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 watch, can it? Yeah, Elliot's been converted into a. Um, Odegaard type role, um, Turkish. He's been like, like brought in and sort of get on the ball, playmaker, not to the obviously bloody level of a Bernardo or, or a Silva, but you know what I mean? That position, he's been brought in and trying to be groomed into that kind of role. Obviously, he needs to develop, but they, they, like, they like him in that role. I don't like him wide right as well, or right left as well. I don't think he's got a pace. Is Gakpo not predominantly a, a central player? Is that not where he yeah. features the most? Mm -mm. No, he's a winger, left winger. No, he's a winger. winger. Yeah, he's winger. a winger, left and right. I've only I've only ever seen him play um, for Holland. I'm not even gonna lie. So I've seen him play for PSV, and I saw him score the goals for Holland. So my thinking was that they brought Gakpo into Liverpool to be a central player, and I thought that Nunes was a massive factor in that. You know, you spend your money on Nunes in the summer. He doesn't hit the way you want him to. And then, obviously, with the top four race being so wide open, so many clubs going for it, Liverpool felt they needed that extra firepower, a player who will probably guarantee slightly more goals. I mean, it's, I'm not even digging in at Nunes here. Don't get me wrong. But you see, he does miss a fair few chances. They're thinking Cody Gakpo might clean them up. Well, I don't think... Cody, I don't think Cody... No, I, think I don't think Gakpo has come to Liverpool to play as a second field to Luis Diaz on the left-hand side. I think, oh, I think he's he coming because he wants to be that's, a starting player. No, because no, if that's he, when... That's what I'm he would have gone to Man United otherwise. He would have gone to Man United otherwise. Where I think hey, Saeed, I don't think Man United had the, the, the cash to sign him. No, we yeah, don't, we I'm don't, surprised, we don't. but I don't understand how it's United didn't get that deal done. The money in the summer, we don't have the money, man. And we're looking it's at the money in the summer. Otherwise, he probably would have gone to United. Yeah, and Liverpool were quicker. I think. Um, I think if he if he hits the ground running, Ben, you know, Diaz has to work for his position. You know what I mean? It just depends on how Gakpo transforms himself into that left wing. I don't necessarily see Diaz as the first choice. Just depends on whether kind of. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I, I'm Do genuine, guys. I'm not even ever going at. I'm not even ever going at him. I'm being mm. honest. When everyone's fit, he's he's a he's gonna he's gonna be one of those. How many times have we spoken about 40, 50 million pound players on on Man City's squad bench? You know, he's gonna be one of those players, squad players. I don't mm. think he's a first teamer when everyone's fit. I'll, I'll maintain that. Mm. 
But then no, again, I did say that. Way- I did say this. I did say this. I said I'd rather have Modric. That I think he suits our style more than Gagpo. Modric's going to be fire if he comes to the Arsenal, man. I'm saying it now. If yeah. if he comes, I think he will. Say he will. Will. They say that you're upset. No, I'm not saying I'm just saying it. It's not, it's not yeah. common, is it, Chris? You know what I mean? You haven't, you haven't put anything on there, have you? You know what I mean? It's, 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 Roderick, Jal, Felix, bloody hell. Transfer galore's at Arsenal at the minute. Yeah, and you're, you don't, you men are breasts. It's a new era. They're not signing, they're not signing Felix. They're not signing Felix, man. Nah, nah this Felix, Felix one is a reach, obviously. Even yeah, yeah, Ornstein, right. when he said it, Ornstein said Arsenal, but he said mm. there's a whole host of clubs that he's been offered to, a whole mm. host that are interested and when you're talking the money that we're talking for Felix, not, not even if it is a loan, the loan fee and the wages, mm. um, I'm sure there are other clubs out there that are willing to spend a bit more and take a bigger risk at it. Um, maybe United being one of them, but obviously Toby saying that United don't have the, the, the facilities for moves at the moment. Um, That's what I've read and heard from people yeah. who, who keep their ears to the ground for the club. Yeah, absolutely. they got no now, money. For me, ultimately... <laughs> Like I said, I wanted Gakpo simply because I believe the manager had a plan. You know, people can say we've got a lot of positions in that side, but I truly believe he would have transformed into a striker. The same way he's done with Tadic, the same way he's rejuvenated Sebastian Haller's career. You know, Ten Hag has done that. He's transformed striker. So I think he could have done that. And that's why I think for me, Liverpool coming out, out literally out of nowhere with no director of football, with three or four people leaving their roles at Liverpool, still get you know ahead of Man United. That's what hurt me the most, and the, and the quickness of Liverpool and the indecisiveness of Man United. Is that's why for me I was pissed off because it's happened before. It's not the first time, you know what I mean. I think even the Nunes one. I think United were were, were very very keen on it, and then next year Liverpool came in. So there's a lot of situations where I'm just like, flip it out, Liverpool, man. You know what I mean? Got their noses instead, and that you know that's I could be a bit sorry about that because at the day I wanted him. I'm not going to come on here and say I didn't want Gakpo. I wanted Gakpo. I think he's someone that I think, you know, over the years will get better. I think his numbers speak for himself. Yes, he's not the most polished player in the world. But I do think, though, with Liverpool buying him, you know what I mean, um, Klopp can transform him and I think he'll suit their system as well. So No, I like the energy, man. I like the energy from him, so I'm not going to lie. I'm the opposite. I didn't want him. Yeah, there you and go. I, and, and I'm saying it. I didn't want him and I'm not suddenly saying he's the best thing since sliced bread. In fact, I'm saying, yeah, prove me wrong. You know, I don't know enough. I don't know everything. Mm. Like, he could turn out to be an absolute bad boy. I yeah. don't see it myself. I think he's going to be decent. I think he's going to be good. As I said, I think he strikes the ball very cleanly. Left foot, right foot. He's got solid technique. But most Dutch players we know, we've grown up to, that most of them grow up with a wicked technical ability. Mm. It's just, I don't think he's involved enough in games. I don't think he has mm. any impact apart from he comes the alive highlight of a goal. Third. Yeah, you see a goal and you see, yo, he scored that yeah, He goal. comes alive at the final yeah. third. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I need to see more of him. I, I actually compared him to uh, a young Delhi Ali. Uh, so okay. it remains to be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I was trying to profile uh, him as a player. Is it because they got the same haircut? No, man. <laughs> the no. Same, the same, actual same hairline as no. well. Really. No like definitive it. position. The same, the same trim and the, like hairline. Same <laughs> no, 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 no. In terms of technique, Deli Ali was a very good technical player. You see some of his finishes for a for a for, a, for a, not a striker. You think, yo, he's got the ability to be a striker, cool finisher. De- you know, left foot, right foot. You know, I see a lot of similarities. But like Deli Ali used to ghost games. He used to mm. ghost games. Think... This guy ghosts games. Yeah, from from I've not watched loads of Gakpo, but from what I've seen, I think he he's definitely got more in his locker. Than Ali, and whilst Ali was a a good fin- like a reliable like really good finisher for Spurs, it was predominantly inside the box where I've, where I've seen. Whereas some of the goals I've seen from Gakpo is like on the edge of the box, outside the box. I'm like, oh wow, like this it's a really good finish. Um, but yeah, it's the hairlines for me. It's the it's the trim, the that sort of like high highest fade, and the you know what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know what it is? Like I said, the, the, the frustration for me, especially in the striker market, winger market, is very, very, you know, if you're going it's, to, it's, it's one of the end of extreme. You either have to be quick, decisive, and go and get that, that kind of price where Liverpool have got, which is, a, for me, a respectable 37 million, very, very decent in the market, or you go and play the high echelon, you know, kind of prices. And I thought, for me, if that's right there and it's available, you know, again, striker market difficult, go and get him and then let's see what Tenar could do. 
and, and, and Bruce him up again. We don't know the situation with Sancho. So again, would be still light anyway. So I think it was a missed opportunity for Man United. And now it leaves us kind of a bit flipping out. Jal Felix, really, a loan deal is what United are looking for right now. So this this is it. It's Jal Felix or nothing for me. I, I'm looking at everyone else. I, you know, we got Igalo. That was a bit of a, a waste of time. You know, we need we need we need a striker, man, because this top four race is it's not a joke, man. You know, what I mean you got Newcastle involved. No, it's game a serious, it's, it's a serious, serious man. It's a serious and affair. You need options because I looked at the bench, yeah. And like I said, yeah, you had Garnacho came off the bench. Um, and that was about it, really. There wasn't enough attacking options. Obviously, Sancho's out, and we need to see when he comes back. But we need options up front. Martial, listen, man, every time there's an injury, honestly, there was a tackle that came in. And not even Forrest, my heart went because I was like, shit, man, is he all right, man? He's going to get back up. I'm always watching Martial thinking, bloody hell, is he okay? So that kind of nervousness, I don't like that. Go and get a striker, whether it's Felix, who again isn't a striker, but can play second striker across the front three, can give us some different... Can you afford him? Sorry? Can you afford Felix? Genuine this, question. This is, where I'm again. At, yeah. this, this is the maths where I'm going with it, yeah. Man United offloaded 16 million in wages through Ronaldo's transfer. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got them wages there. You've got the 8, mi 8 million low fee. Altogether, the package is around 16 million. It's not, not going to be, be 8 million loan fee. No, that's that's what's been said anyway. That's what's yeah. the... Nah, um, I'm what pretty sure hearing? I'm seeing from Ornstein and Co. It's around like 16 million quid. And no, no, there's, no, no. there's not even going to be... No, 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 no. I'm saying like, that's what they say. I'm saying like, they're saying it's like a 60 million... 60 million pound loan fee excluding the wages and there's going to be no buy option like that's that's kind yeah, of no, no buy option no 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 that's, I'm not gonna that's lie to very you. happy for for yeah. 6 months and another thing I, another thing so shout out uh, Mariah from Touchline I was discussing with him yesterday and he's he was telling me that he was read he read that like United only have like 23 million to spend combined yeah. in, in in transfers and wages so yeah, again, I have to ask the question. With wages. Can you, okay. can you afford, can Man United afford to sign Jao Felix this window? Uh, my, my, this is my honest opinion. At the end of the day, it's not my money. That's one thing as well. And I get it with ownership. I think the owners don't want to go and spend a striker, but again, they're trying to sell the football club. So right now, they're looking at loan packages. I think for me, six month deal, I think it's worth it because then this is what happens in the summer. Say we win a trophy, say he has a good positive loan. When in the summer he becomes available, he's got that direct relationship between Man United and Atletico Madrid. They've got that direct relationship. And he then is going to say, you know what, Atletico Madrid, I only want to go Man United. Imagine Chelsea come involved. Imagine you've got who else in the summer. Then he's got that direct relationship. I think it's a worth, it's a, it's a point worth going at. And I think for me, we're going to need that kind of superstar anyway at Man United. If we're going to go and progress, you need more players. Listen, the idea of, you know, more players at Man United is needed because the other day, Man City have got sometimes Grealish on the bench and whoever, like, you need more. Arsenal, Modric, if he comes on, he'll be fighting out with Gabriel Martinelli. I don't understand the, the kind of negative towards competition. Jal Field is coming. We've got more depth, more quality, and it's something that we need. We lack it. So I would take him for me six months, build a relationship, and then buy him in the summer because we'll have new owners who then will have money. So I think it's a win-win. The pie, is, the pie is cheap. Listen, the pie, for what I've heard, and someone told me yesterday that he has no, absolutely no kind of... Um, you know, no desire, in desire no. to come to Man United. No, no desire. He, he has no nothing to do with Man United, basically. Mm -hmm. So, the pie ain't happening. So again, it's, it's Felix or nothing. And if if Chelsea go and get him or anyone goes gets him, I'll be pissed off again because it's another reason why we haven't got him for him, knowing that we've literally right now in this top four race, you're looking at other teams. Gakpo now, if Liverpool get top four because of Gakpo or his impact, you know, we'd be looking at thinking, flipping out. He's he's added the. The squad with numbers and they've he's helped but, elevate Liverpool. So we got look, this competition. What, what type of what what type of player do you lot want though? Because Gakpo and Felix are completely different players. One, 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 Gakpo is a left winger, but you've got Rashford on the left wing. Sancho is is due to come back and play his left wing. So do you guys need an actual out and out number nine? Do you mm. need a, a false nine? Do you need a left winger? Because I feel like you're, you. This sounds very similar to what we do, which is. We just go for names and we have no idea the position that we're Don't targeting, the, 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 the role we're, we're looking for someone to play, the actual type of player that we're looking for as well. There's no consistency here. I think for me, the gap pole situation, I've got this big, big feeling that he would have been transformed into a striker. And I think, you know, the manager would have had an idea 
of making him a striker and transforming him that because he's got the build, he's got the physical kind of like element of the game. I think he would have been transformed to a striker. And with Felix, don't get me wrong, it's it's a wild card. It's someone that's available as a as a option as a second striker plus maybe the way you kind of go about it. I think it could be an option, but. Like I said, it's what's out there. You know, if you then go and go for a wild option, it doesn't work out. You spend 20, 25 million. I get it's a waste of money. You know, you know, with Felix, the quality is there. Then I would look to Ten Hag to find a solution of fitting him in because I trust mm. Ten Hag. So, yeah, yeah Ses- man. Sesco, think... Sesco's already joining RB Leipzig. So, but the thing is, with, let me tell you, something yeah, but about he's that. profile wise, that's what they need. Yeah, mm. I think that could happen really. Hundred percent. No, it's done. It's already. He's already gone. To no, 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 but this this is where it gets. This is where it gets interesting. They're under the sort of the same model, so you know it's not as if someone's missing out. They're under the same model, so you can not actually go for them if you want to, because they're under the same model. If there were two different clubs with two different owners and whatnot, but they're under the same, you know. Um, no man, no you man, you can't buy him now. You can't buy him. What do you mean? He's leaving Salzburg to go to RB Leipzig in the summer. There's no, there's Wait, no. This other... is United came in for him now. No, you couldn't get him now. Well, no, you wouldn't get him. It's done. Even if it was the same model. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They, they're the same model, but they're still completely different football clubs. So they're two different clubs, clubs, man. Two different yeah. clubs. They need to be careful though, because they did the same with Bosley as well. So Bosley's name isn't as as it once was a year or two ago. Because they, a lot of people wanted Shabozla, and then he went. Was, was, didn't he do the same move from Salzburg to yeah. RB? Yeah, but isn't yeah. that more an indication of his performances for for Leipzig? Not saying he's been bad. I ain't been watching, yeah. but I yeah. don't think it's because he went from one club to another. I think he's there right now. If if a team really wanted to Shabozla, they could they could probably go and get him. I think the Vlahovic one is interesting. It just depends on what situation happens. Can't afford him. Sorry? Again, you can't afford Vlavic right now. No, no, I'm not I'm saying it. it's another one. Again, long-term option in the summer. Like I said, not... not Definitely they broke. Are you not broke like that? Why, why yeah, are you yeah, guys man. broke? Yeah, you're the biggest, you're the biggest, biggest baddest, 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 you know, you baddest, baddest club, club in the world. Why, why are you broke? I don't understand. No, I don't know, man. Vlavic would be a six island. I'd be looking at... I'd be fuming if you were to sign him in the summer. I think he's... been in debt the whole time I've known you guys. Funny man, you know, I'm broke, yeah, man. Yeah, Someone put two ram in the comments. I swear he's got like he's not a striker, he's, he's, not, he's, not he's, not not a striker. he's not linked with us. He's not a striker, too. Yeah, I was already yesterday. Yeah, but you can play but for RB. You need um, some Munch and Gladback. There, there were times where I think the what the few times I watched them play, there were times where he played in the two with um Alex Alexander Plea or whatever his name is. Mm. So, yeah, they don't yeah. they don't play a two though. So you're you're asking him to basically play as a, a hold up number nine by himself up yeah. front. Yeah, but they're gonna, gonna sign Gakpo, who don't really play as a striker. That's what I'm saying. That's that's why I said to Saeed it doesn't really make any sense. You don't need to go you know, you need to get one of those go and, go and, go and get Patrick Schick or something, one of them ones, man. Yeah, he's, build he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, build, build it up again, man. Come on, build up your castle again, man. Come on, man. You need to start right now. Right now you're violating no, no, man said Patrick no, no, Schick. No, and he's not even a bad player, but still, come on. But that's their level right now, and I'm gonna be real. What, what are you saying? Oh, that's not like it's rubbish, nah. Man. Nunes, nah. They don't, no one wants to go there right now. They bought that you hundred million know little fidget spinner. Right you bought that you little hundred million. Right well, the only ones that want to go Casimero right now is, is yeah. oh, Casemiro came. Yeah, bad boy signing. That's it. But then you that's you bust your money on him. That's it. Why did you spend it all on him and well, then well, Cristiano Ronaldo's well, wages? Very Chris, money's well spent with Casemiro. You're not watching. No, he's a bad boy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You watch it, he was. Oh, I've seen him, I've seen him. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good record. It's, it's decent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just catch you there. I'll just catch you there. They had last oh, night, yeah. the show got a bit wild last night, so you know, what I mean, big up to that. I, I was swerving that one. No, he's good. I, I like Captain. Man. Great pedigree, great pedigree. I you, Z, you know what I mean? You that. You're lagging. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, man. On this, it's... on this, on the Cisco stuff, I'm just going to bring the super chat in while yeah, we were just, while we were just on the subject. HKN said United beat Cisco. He replies by saying, "You guys are misinformed. If United pay 50, 60 m to RB Leipzig, they will let him go without playing for them at all." I don't believe that. But again, we don't have the money, so it's, it's yeah, it's mad. Yeah. Yo, HKN, man. Yo, yo, um, HKN, go get in touch with United in a bit. But where are you getting that where are you getting that information that if Man United were to pay 50, 60 million for a player that's not even arrived at RB Leipzig, that he would then be let when has that ever happened in football that a player is 
not even joined his club yet, and you and you buy him. When, when does that ever happen? The way I looked at it, because it came under the same model. That's obviously again, you have just informed me that they're two different clubs. But the way I looked at it, and when I was researching it, it, it did say because they come under the same model, you can work a way around it. But anyway, we don't have the money, so it's again, it's Ses- Sesco is meant to be um, in Cuckoo's replacement. Thing, so, so if that would be wild if that happened, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yo, man, clock me. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, you understand. And also, Sesco, I think Sesco actually wants to develop at RB Leipzig first before he makes a big move. I, f- I think I think young players are trying to map out their careers a little bit more sensibly, at least some of them anyway. We saw that with Jude Bellingham. You guys tried to take him on a tour around Carrington and he went to Dortmund instead. So young players, I think I think Sesco knows that the jump up from the Austrian league to the Premier League is quite vast. So he probably That's just what your players do well as well. You know what I mean? All the young players that you're buying right now, hmm? hopefully they will well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you I'm hope they do well. You know, you're this. I mean, I mean, I don't know, man. You missed. Out I mean, yeah, no, you're trying to be shady. Like, you missed out on some targets. You know, actually, we'll get a loan in the next six months to Vitesse Arnhem. Bro, we Swap don't out. deal with Vitesse. Go and check. Go and check. Players, bro. We don't talk to Vitesse anymore. That's where all your players will be. This is not the Roman era anymore. We don't chat to Vitesse. We're so where is it now? There's a multi-club model coming soon. Crystal Palace. We don't have a specific club we send them to. We, oh, that's we, right. We you do just, the multi-club you just, model. You just, you just, you just put it on a random, on a random um, bowl one. with a name, bunch of names. Just put one out of the bowl and say, yeah, fuck it. Let's chuck in there. Yeah. A Todd Bowley philosophy, people. Watch out for it. It's coming. Did you did you get three points this week, Toast? No, I didn't. Soon How come, many soon points come. are you behind soon us? Soon come, soon come, soon. How many points soon are you come. behind us again? Don't go anywhere. We've been, we've been, poor. <laughs> we've been poor for two months straight and you're still behind us. No, I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> the great Chelsea, you're talking to me about, did you win? Yeah. I'm just you asking, isn't it? I'm just, you got your asking. Okay. I tried. I, tried. I, didn't, get to, I didn't get to speak, I didn't get to speak, I didn't get to speak to you yet. So I'm just, bro, I'm just bro, checking. I tried to keep don't worry, calm. Don't, don't worry, I watched London Pundit. I'll be back, I'll be back for you. I didn't get to chat to you, bro. your first win. You got your first win in ages. Hold on. Ages, bro. Against one of the worst sides in the league. Literally the second worst side in the league. And you're puffing your your skinny pigeon chest out. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Nah, we're gonna get easy. Okay. easy. He's in the gym, man. He's working out, man. Nuts. Uh, Let me see what super chats have coming on the transfer business and whatnot. Um, Red yeah. Smoke says hi, Turkish. How's it going, my guy? All good. Do you think Arsenal will get Mudrik? I do. And also, do you see Arsenal doing any other business in January? For listen, as soon as I mentioned Felix. Tobes, I think, was first to say Arsenal ain't getting Felix. And I get why he says that, because that would be a move that's been unlike Arsenal, going for like a top player, not even in his prime yet. And for the for the money mentioned, um, it would be a massive risk. But like I said, he's a quality, quality player. So you need to stop thinking like this, innit? Like we talk about, we, we, like we talk about, about you yeah, know, but they've done it. They've done it. They've, they've upgraded their signings as the progression has increased. So if we're wow. gonna keep the same energy for Man City, not believing in the Champions League and not, not aiming for it and saying, nah, man, we're just you know, I mean we're just domestic kings in it, we're just domestic kings, we're just yeah, yeah. What, what, what are you doing right now? You have to believe no, I'm just saying you have to believe in it. So same energy for Arsenal, you have to believe in you're gonna go for the players. So you've gone from buying I don't know who the players you bought, yeah, but suddenly huh? yeah, yeah. Now you're suddenly buying Partey from Atletico Madrid, big Atletico Madrid. Now you're yeah. buying now you're buying Gabriel Jesus from big man city. Zinchenko from Big Man City. Now you got to go for Big Felix or Small got Felix. To, but until I see it happen from this board, I just named you three, four me. players, man. You bought, man. I think you, I think you, one hundred percent get one with one on Mudrik or Felix, man. That's a big boy signing in January. Mudrik, think, yeah, Mudrik is well within our remit. Felix is the one that would be the big risk financially, and I hear that. worth the whether it's worth that risk, especially especially without an option or obligation. You can't. I hear you, you need that in, in the terms because you can't just give a player five, six months and pay, let's say, up to 15 million, all included. It might be more like Tobe said. And then he goes and gets sold to someone else off the back of good performances. That, that would be silly as well. I want Felix. If I had to pick out of the two, which I don't think I have to because Arsenal should be now going for both players, not just oh, one yeah. of the two. But where would you play Felix, though, if you've got Modric as well? Right now, I, I... Felix goes up top. Mm. They're saying Turkish, you've got the handbrake on and you gotta put the car in first gear and start driving. You're the biggest club in London, you guys always say. You're top of the league. Go and get Felix, man. 
We've, never, like, we've, we've, work. we've been the biggest club in London my whole life. So what's the we've, problem then? Go get him. We've, we've never gone for the top, top, top players <laughs> in world football, my guys. So until I see it, until I see it, then I'll start believing it. Mm. Obviously, Felix is a big name that will be wanted by a lot of clubs, but it just has to make sense financially. Now, if Arsenal, listen, there might be some sort of PTSD there because I've seen Arsenal lose out to other teams on players for a few bags. But this is obviously a new Arsenal in terms of the last five years. We're top of the league. We're flying. A young manager, a young team. Finally, we have a team and a squad and a club that other players are interested in. Finally, even Ronaldo talked about us in that Piers Morgan interview. We've come a long way in 18 months. We've come a long, long way in 18 months. Felix would be another show that Arsenal have changed their ways. It would be, another, it would be a power move. Felix would be a, a power move in the league. Because if we've got Felix and Mudrick, and then you ask me in February, can we win the league? As long as we're in and around there, 100%. 100%. So as well. I think, I think Mudrick is a power move as well. I think he's a power move equally because it's I all agree. circumstantial. It's all circumstantial. I mean, Grizz, you named all those players that they went and got from the big clubs and whatnot. But all those clubs, they were kind of willing to let the players go or if the, if the right fee came along. The likes of Shakhtar, they don't want to lose Mudrick. He's the, the crown jewel, if you like. And they've been saying things like, we want a fee closer to Grealish than we want to this. Like, they don't want to let him go. So it would be a massive, massive power move if Arsenal do go and change their ways like Turkish says and pay the fee to get the big dog in. It's a it's a step up from the signings and the money they've been paying and the direction they want to go. I, I think it's um, crazy that you know, Arsenal are not linked with any midfielders, man. I think one injury to, to Party or Xhaka and then you, you're playing El Nenny and Lacombe. Yeah, we've been linked. We've been linked with Danilo a few weeks ago. Then it's Tillemans coming up again recently. Um, mm. We've had links mm. there. Well, it's, 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 I, I think Tillman's going to end up at Arsenal, but but I agree that the, the you could argue that you don't need or you hundred percent don't need Mudrick and Felix. You need one of them, and then the other money spent on a midfielder. Hundred percent. Mudrick's not a striker. Mudrick's not a striker. Left, left winger. Left winger. Yeah. He's left winger, yeah. But but still, yeah, yeah he's just saying it is in terms of an attacker. I say if you get Felix, you don't need to sign anyone up front. I thought Mudrick Felix can Felix play, play off the left. Hmm? I thought Mudrick can play. Um, both sides. Mm. He's always left. He's always left. I say. I say. He's a no, no, he, he, can. Can. he is. I, can. Yeah, on the, on I agree with you. I agree with you. Right, I, agree again, with you. I, I, I don't watch this guy. I'm not. I, you. you but then they still need. A, they still need someone down the middle. The Ukrainian though. league. Oh, yeah, they need someone down the middle. Hundred percent. So that's why if you get Felix, he's he's probably going to tick more boxes in terms of positions. But mm. you yeah. need a midfield off. Time to act, man. Arsenal fans. Time is now. Strike while the iron is hot, man. They also need a, they also need a presence out wide, someone who can who can step in and compete with Martinelli or compete with Saka, right? Yeah, because competition is healthy. Competition is, is yeah, man. Competition. competition is what you need, especially when you you know you don't want anyone coasting. You don't want anyone thinking that their their spot is kind of taken. You know, what I mean, for granted. So that's Smith, Smith me, Rowe's job, isn't it, to come back and put some pressure on these guys? It's really yeah, it's most more time he's on the sideline. No, yeah, Croy, Croydon De Bruyne. We'll, we'll surely be able to yeah. come in and You're do it. A&E, man. It's mad. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's always on the touchline, mate. You can so, do it, it's hard to say what's going on with him, to be honest, because I thought he'd be back come January, but he's he's not looking back at all. Damien says, love to the panel all the way from LA. Um, wishing you guys a happy new year. Let's have a great show today. Much love, people. Hope you guys are enjoying. We're nearly 45 minutes in. If you are, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I think I'm 80 away from 75k. And make sure you go over to the official channel, people. We hit 20k over the last 24 hours. So big up everyone that's supporting the thing over there. Your boy Howie says, big up the whole crew. Saeed, keep representing for United. Tobes with the ball IQ. You support a dead team, though. Best football show on YouTube. Love for the whole panel. Um, Come love on, big up to you, man. Love for that, Howie. Where are we? Edson Arante da, da Nascimento. For most of us over 50s, the greatest football player of all time. My greatest inspiration of all time. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mentioned that at the start of the show, show, the show. I'm surprised you're over 50 as well, my guy. Um, mad, mad. Um, I thought, you were, I thought you was a bit younger than that, but that's why it makes sense now when you mentioned Pele in recent weeks when we're talking about Messi and Di Stefano and mm. these players there. So you obviously got the pleasure of, of watching him in, in your early years. And Ethan also says, rest in peace, Pele, one of the goats and one of the reasons we call it the beautiful game. Let me just save these super chats as they're coming in. 
so I don't miss any. All right, cool. They're saved. Where are we? Uh, I see some about other clubs. I'm gonna I'm gonna touch in on them when we talk about the other clubs. So yeah, I'll save them. Um, and again, that one's another club. Grizz, what do you think would be the best way for Gakpo to be integrated into your squads immediately? No. Yeah, he's got no choice, unfortunately, at the moment. It's going to be have to be, yeah, get on there, because at the moment we've got Oxlade-Chamberlain on the left, who, don't get me wrong, had done a, done a decent job. But, you know, especially that we know he's on his way out, you want to start preparing for the future, and this guy is going to have to come in straight away. I think he's going to be, I think, I think he's going to be thrown straight in there in the FA Cup game. Especially when you see Diaz last January comes and hits the ground running. You know, has an impact in getting back in to the, uh, into the title race and, and fighting. The, the major thing is he speaks the language as well. Oh, yeah. Joe says, Grizz, Nunes is shocking. Gakpo is overrated. Only played in League One level competition. <laughs> Two laughing emojis and a wink. A louder wink in it, bro. Just three laughing <laughs> emojis would have been sick. <laughs> got a got wink at the end, then it make me all feel all funny and shit. <laughs> we got blue moon. Okay, good. good. <laughs> Rest in peace, Pele. It was funny to watch how Arsenal accountants were praying for Leeds to win. We'll give you another dose of PTSD. It's what we do. Ask Grizz. Oh, still very confident over there. Um, we've got this weirdo again with the with the DP Turkish. You've had a stinker this week. Late for forever Arsenal, cheating on the OG Big Six, ducking my FIFA challenge. At least Toby is stressed about about what. I don't know what you maybe the drop points. I don't, I don't know. I don't. guess so, yeah. He needs to change yeah. his um, DP though. That's long. Chris <laughs> <That's, that's long. laughs> been waiting everywhere, man. Chris <laughs> been waiting to get this off his chest for 24 hours. Um, ain't that deep, man? Ain't that deep? All right, there's another one for Tottenham. We'll save that. 280k per week. No obligation and option to buy for Felix. Makes zero sense for Arsenal. Focus is on Mudrick. Also, Yuri hype needs to stop. He can't play in our midfield. Bro, facts, man. I'm sick or tired of this Tealy hype, man. How many times have we spoken about Tealemans? Like, constantly. This guy, always talking about getting into the Arsenal team. Bloody hell. He's not even a DM. He wouldn't get in now. He wouldn't get in now, considering Xhaka's improvement this season. But oh, yeah. if we look at the bench, I'd much prefer a Tillemans than a Lokonga. That's, that's the honest truth. And I don't think anyone here would say different. So, it's about adding that depth and quality as well to, to, to help keep the standards of the first eleven going. I think I think party's more injury prone than Jacko though. That's my point. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That would probably be the better area to look at. Obviously, there's even talks of Milinkovic Savage again, but he's 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 much more an eight than yeah. Than I think Tielemans, his form has his form has been very very wayward this season, but I, I still think he's a good player. I think that the only issue with Tielemans is um, well, the good thing is. If you were to sign him in the summer, he'd cost you he'd cost you nothing. Yeah. But it's that age old problem of can he play in a midfield that is heavy on 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 the pressing and the off the ball work and stuff? Because he works hard, but I just don't think he's physically um he's physically strong them. enough in duels. And it, it, it's quite it, it's it's quite uh, not easy, but like when when he's in your midfield, you can target that midfield. And exploit mm. his lack of his lack of athleticism. Mm. Yeah, because he does work his socks off, but he just he just isn't athletic. Doesn't nope. suit him at all. Yeah, it's one thing not being athletic. At times, he's been caught out in terms of desire and determination, and that, yeah. that makes me weary about him. Hundred percent, he gets caught at, at time, this season one too many times. He's been caught on on the ball, and he's been caught basically making like sloppy passes straight to the opposition. It's, it's a shame because I, I really like Tiedemann's man. Yeah, really yeah. Like that stretches back to last season as well. From if, you, if, you took, if you took them long shots off of him, he's getting more hype than Ruben Neves and he shouldn't be. Uh, he's on he's on Neves' level though, so I don't really understand. I think Neves is better personally. Mm. I don't, I don't know about that. I think Neves hype. Neves really hype, good. Saeed. What do you mean? You wanted him at United? Nah, you're a dick. Yeah, listen, man. <laughs> you're, listen. You definitely and wanted you, him You can't United. just say if you take away the long shots, he's a ridiculously good ball striker with both feet. Like, how, how can you just take away a guy's, a guy's, like one of the guy's USPs? I think he's got a better technical ability than, than, than Neves. What? Ne yeah. Neves has got a good switch and I think Neves is probably... Um, is his mobility is even worse, Nevers. But no, Nevers, 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 is, Nevers isn't. 
he's better defensively, but I don't think he's yeah, like I don't know, man. I don't Nevis, know. Nevis got yeah. Nevis got a bigger body frame. Nevis got an excuse to be a little bit cumbersome, yeah. a little bit stiff. He's a DM. That's his role, you know. He sprays passes, gets the ball. He's an original old school playmaker. Tillemans is an eight. He's got to be shifting. He's got to be moving. He's got to be nimble. He just runs out of gas. He runs out of energy. Man's puffing after 25 minutes, 30 minutes. He's gone. Mm. Technically, yeah, you're right. Both they're both technically good, but different players, man. But Tillemans, I, I don't know, man. You said you'd rather have Tillemans than who did you say, Turkish? Lakonga. Yeah. Lakonga. He's better than Lakonga for sure. Yeah, yeah, but Lukonga, but Lukonga just sits there and does his job. And like, like Tillemans, can he do what, that? No, but what does Lakonga actually do? Though? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear that. I hear Lekonga that. Yeah. McAllister's hear that. a good shout. That's a great shout in the chat. McAllister. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah but shout. you ain't getting. That's you ain't getting... Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm just saying that, like, if, you, if you're going to strike while the iron's hot, that's a proper player going get. Mm. Mo says from Neil Jones, final fee for get for add-ons included will be no more than forty-four that's million right. English pounds. Yeah, yeah, that's than right. Lages. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Who's Neil Jones? Sorry. Neil Jones is like a general uh, question. That's your like um Alistair Gold. Alistair Gold. I thought that was Paul Joyce for you. Yeah, we got two. We're big dogs, innit? We've got more than one. <laughs> let me, let me <laughs> Neil Jones, brother. Your club's got one. <laughs> Tom just searching up Neil Jones and that. No, man, I'm telling you, innit? We... Spurs got Spurs related. In fact, I, should, I should really take Grizz's yeah, word because he's Thank he's actually certified in this team. Yeah. I can't lie. Neil I... Jones. Yeah, every, time, yeah, every time we're just about to lose faith in Grizz, he pulls one out the bag. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, wasn't it just the other week I was saying, bro, how many names do you keep linking to Liverpool? When are you going to give us like pure evidence? Yeah, how do you know what's happening? Listen, I've you, told you. I, okay, that, okay. That, I give you like, names that were interested in. I give you I give you names that were inquired. I'm telling you, next is Casado. So everyone's today saying, no, nah, no, Casado, man, shut up, man. He's getting Chelsea, right? I'm telling you. And the big one, we know, when it, Wagwan? We know what the big one's about, so, so what's Casado for? Is it for January? You and Steve. Yeah, 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 January. Oh, I didn't much? tell you. No, you didn't. Tell, tell us more. Oh, I can't tell you more. What's that? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be in touch. I'll be in What's touch. up? Premium yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, premium content. Yeah, people want to join our WhatsApp. How much Shelty, Turkish? Shelty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't got that more into the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Aslan said John Murto approached Atletico in the summer for Felix, but was immediately rebuffed as confirmed by Romano. So he has been a long standing standing target. And Osua says, Big up the big six, slowly becoming a daily tradition for me. Turkish, what will you pick between Felix and Tillemans or Mudrik and what? Felix and oh Felix and Tillemans or Mudrik and Bellingham? Mudrik and Bellingham all day. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to pick one. Out of Felix and Mudrik would be Felix, so it's it's a, it's a it's, it's a loaded question a bit. But if I'm having to pick a pair, Mudrik and Bellingham. Yeah, he knew what he was doing that question for sure. Yeah, um, but big up for the super chat. As a Liverpool fan says, Billy, I really wish we got a midfielder instead of Gatpo. We should have stole Casemiro from United. He would have been perfect. Oh, yeah, you got Fabinho, man. You don't you need Fabinho, man. That would have been very offensive. Fabinho's the best thing, man. Come Who on, that? Go on, so, that. Mandela. Oh, yeah. Mandela says Tobes rolling his eyes when asked when Turkish was talking about Arsenal. Love to see it. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Um, where are we? Just Bro, the, whole, uh, the youngest squad, the youngest manager. Yeah, I didn't actually clock this. Fair play. I didn't clock this. Times, man. All, the, all the years not. before, he's played wing Turam. So I don't know. Him playing up front now is a bit strange to me. But yeah. But when he came on for France, he kept getting put out wide. So yeah, for France, he was getting put out. I don't wide. know if he's actually. Long term, still going to be a striker, but he's playing there this season. But usually he's a winger, so I don't know. Mm. Um, uh, that answers Uncle Mad's question. Love for the super chat. Missing back in the building. Get Mudrick, move Martinelli down the middle, and go get Casado or Danilo. If I had to pick overall, I would grab Felix and cover for Partey. More balance. Um, I'm not a fan of the Martinelli down the middle idea, if I'm honest, but that, that's because it's, yeah, it's an unknown entity, in my opinion. I know we've We've seen him in that position before because obviously our front three is, is majority fluid. But in terms of starting week in, week out there, back to goal is where I worry about Martinelli. I'd rather him pick up the ball and run at a player than have his back to goal at times. And the way Arteta plays, um, he wants a bit of that as well. As you can see, Eddie's still kind of going for that rather than being the poacher in the box. Kevin says, as much as I'd like a CM for cover, I can see us wait until the summer. If we get Mudrick and or Felix, I think we can win the league. And big up from Texas. 
big up to Shai. He said, the YouTube man didn't keep me young. Come on, my guy. As long as you're healthy, that's the main thing. And Ibi says, is it a reach to say that a, as a midfield unit, Arsenal have been the best this season so far? They all work brilliantly together and I'd class Odegaard as an eight now. What do you think? Well, it does feel like we play with more, more two eights than an eight and a ten. But Odegaard is the one that's, you know, the, the, the controller, the conductor compared to um, Xhaka, who <laughs> against West Ham, when Tierney's playing, Xhaka wasn't really that runner into the box because Tierney was, you know, bombing down the line. Whereas when Zinchenko plays and he slots into the middle, um, that's when you see more an advanced Jack, Xhaka. As a midfield unit, I know Dan Potts on his interview said um, Partey, Xhaka and Odegaard have been the best midfield three in the league this season. And I know he got a lot of stick for it, but I think this season we, you know, in terms of play and um, fluidity and complementing each other, the midfield has done his thing. Um, Odegaard, Xhaka and Partey. Um, they're all vital pieces. I know Odegaard got the plaudits against West Ham and rightfully so because he, he was... He's a quality he was, player, man. I love watching Odegaard. He's definitely an eight. He's definitely yeah, yeah. He's he, never, he, never, he never pulls off to the left. He's always on that right with Saka and, and Ben White. So, yeah, the right side of the eight, I think. And Xhaka's done bits this season. Partey's done bits this season. Listen, they, it, it's literally a perfect three at the moment. You know, obviously, that's where the, the depth coming in is important to get it right because those three, when one is missing, we do look a lot different, whether it's the Congo in for Partey or whether it's Vieira in for Odegaard, which we haven't seen much of yet and it's unfair on Vieira because he's still a new boy, but... Those three, they've really kind of built something. They're solid and they work well together. They get the best out of each other and they just know each other's jobs. Um, I think um, Zinchenko could do Xhaka's job, though, no, don't you think, as a deputy? Well, when, when, when we signed Zinchenko. Zinchenko, James was banging on about, you know, he's coming in to be the, um, be the new eight. And, mm -hmm. and James was adamant in that. And I got it. I understood why. I, you know, you know my opinions on Xhaka prior to this season. And I thought, yeah, I'll take that. I'll mm. take that because it's an improvement for Ukraine. But then Jack, yeah. look at the way Jack has hit the ground running. Arteta came out recently and said he asked Jack, you know, he told Jack, this is what I want from this position. And this season so far, Jack has delivered exactly what he's wanted and more, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. if that continues, then we haven't really got uh, much of a problem there in terms of starting. But depth wise, rotation when you're entering Champions League football, that's where, you know, that's where the big dogs and the difference is, is made. So yeah, I expect some reinforcements in that position come this summer. Where are we? There's a Tottenham one. I'll save that for Tottenham. No, I think that's all the ones. Here's one for transfer window. Benacer to Arsenal. He's only got a 50 million release clause. Um, a name that I've heard mentioned too, but I don't think there's any solid links to it. And in terms of the transfer window stuff, that's it. I got a couple Tottenham ones here and I got one for Hugh, but I'm going to save that for when we go into the subjects. Listen, we're coming up to an hour already and we haven't even discussed the results or made predictions. Um, so we're going to keep it moving as quick as possible, people. Melissa here says, regardless of who you all support, what is everyone's top four for this season? Melissa, it's hard to get into top fours for this season now. We did make predictions at the beginning of the season. So you can look at that. It's on the um, Big Six Instagram. I know it'd be very different now looking at people's top fours um, predicted at the beginning of the season. But yeah, yeah it's Last year, we touched in on it in January. I believe we've done a DR Sports Live where we kind of touched in on our predictions at the start and then, you know, maybe reassess them or looked into them. So we might do that again, um, January, February times. It's still early days. It's only 15 games, so we're not even halfway through the season. So, yeah, look out for that if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the man then if you haven't already. Hughes, Saeed, Grizz, Tobes, Matisse, Stolf, Huggery, the official channel. All of the links are in the description below. So show some love. As well as Manscaped people, um, you know what it is already. TB620 is the code. Um, and yeah, let's get into some let's get into some Premier League talk and touch in. I'm gonna say touch in on the results, performances, and then obviously talk about the upcoming one. Um, I, I, I wanted Grizz to kind of move from Gatpo into the um, Aston Villa result, but we'll start off with you, and we'll start off with obviously Harland breaking the the 
uh, breaking a record, one of probably many that he will be breaking come the end of his time in the Premier League. Um, fastest player ever to, to hit 20, co- 20 goals. And before we go over to you, Hugh. The Performance Package 4.0 is here, people. Get a look at this. If you want balls as smooth as Haaland's finishing, make sure you cop this right now and support the Big Six family. And don't say we don't look after you, people. Use code TB620 at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. Clean. Get your budget. Get your budget. Clean. Balls as clean as one that. take. One take. Clean. If you want your balls as clean as Haaland's finishing, TB620, manscaped.com, people. You talk to me, man. Haaland broke a record, two goals. Um, nice victory, 3 1. It was the week, it was the game week of three ones this week. Um, but we'll get into prediction table and all that. Mm. Say, uh, say, if, we time, time, if we have time, if we have time, if we have time, if we have time, man, say no more. No, yeah, just... listen, for me, it was just it was just a case of with Arsenal getting the win the night before, we wanted to keep on your tails and that kind of thing. We don't want to give you an eight-point gap. Um, the pressure was on. I know Leeds were quite depleted. They were missing quite a few players, and we still had to go there and do the business. And there were some weird selections. You know, no Foden, Rico Lewis starting a right back, and and I don't really like Grealish and Mahrez, and I'm sure plenty, you guys have stuff to talk about when it comes to Jack Grealish. But listen... It was the Haaland show. It has been the Haaland show. I said back in July to you guys, and we had a good laugh about it, but I meant it, and I still mean it, the most exciting signing in Premier League history. And he's come in, and he's been nothing but exciting. Whether you want to call him a robot or shit all over him or say we're boring, like Cam said last night, I I don't care. I really don't care. There's been three Premier League games this season he's not scored. I was watching the compilation City made on YouTube before we went live. The variety of goals is unbelievable. Head, left foot, right foot, outside the box, inside the box. He's come in and added something that we were missing. That's why we're willing to let the likes of Jesus and Sterling go because they were being given chances that they simply weren't scoring. That's not to say I disrespect those players. I've made that clear. I've got a lot of love for both those players. But Haaland's come in and he's done what we needed. So, listen, great performance overall. De Bruyne, excellent. Rico Lewis, I think he's the Kyle Walker successor. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Grealish, listen, with Jack Grealish, you know, you know, I defend him. I, I love Jack Grealish, but that first half performance, I, I can't defend. I can't defend in terms of his finishing. He has to put at least one or two of those to bed, but he kind of redeemed himself for me in the second half. He got his stats, he got his GNA or his A at least. He got two of them. So overall, listen, I'm happy. I can't give out about him too much when he's in a winning team. If, if the roles were reversed or it was a different situation whereby we're losing every week or we're dropping points, yeah, I will start to criticize Jack Grealish more. But when we're winning three one and he's still getting two assists and you know we're still in this title talk, I'm not going to go in on anybody. You know, Pep makes these decisions; they're doing their jobs, and life is good right now. And um, do you want me to touch on Everton, or do you want to go in on Grealish, Toby? That's, on Haaland, I don't think Haaland. I don't want to say anything. I don't. I don't yeah, think Haaland's yeah, exciting. Yeah. I don't think. Ha- I don't think exciting is the right word for Haaland. If it, if we're talking about exciting, it's Mbappe. I wouldn't say Haaland is exciting. I wouldn't watch Haaland and be excited. Haaland pops up with the goal as great finisher on the end of moves. Not really, not, he's not taking people on and, you know, he's a great player, but he's not taking people on and exciting people. And, you know, it's not, he's not that type of guy, but. I don't, I don't mean in terms of style, Matisse. I mean, in terms of he's coming in, and he's defying logics, breaking yeah, records, yeah. doing things we've yeah. never, that, that's exciting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Seeing things that have never been done before. 20 really, goals in 14 think, games. Um, 26 in all competitions. Yeah. I need you guys to win the league. Um, I need you guys to really step it up because it's getting a bit sticky icky in North London. So we need you. Oh. We need you guys winning games. I was doing the watch along. I was watching. <laughs> I was enjoying. I was. I was rooting for you. Do you know what I mean? Every goal that went in, I was smiling about it. I think um, Rico. So now, you all celebrate all the teams now, yeah. Do you not celebrate when Man City beat Liverpool? No, I'm just saying, innit? You've been calling me out, but you're. No, 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 but, but my rivalry is not with me, me and Hugh are oil brothers. What are you talking about? <laughs> me, me and you are oil brothers. We we ain't rivals. No, but for the for the detriment of Arsenal winning, you're doing all of this. Yeah, because money. I don't like Arsenal. They're, okay. they're rivals. Yeah, so we're it's London. okay. Then. Real rivalry, say. Like, this is what it's okay what it to do like. that now. So you admit it's okay what, to do that, bro. Okay. This is what real rivalry looks like. That's why when you try to say that Man City, Man United was some big derby, it's just it's clearly not because I've seen you cheering them on. But anyway. Um, Rico Lewis deserves a massive, massive, mm. massive shout because yeah, definitely. 18 years old and he's getting the tactical mm. responsibility of like Philip Lahm and Kimmich under Pep. I don't know. Like the guy is just in the midfield with Rodri and he's so press resistant. Like the guy is just, he's really, really good. I, I can see why the last show, I think it was, you were talking about him as the Carl Walker replacement. Mm. He, I was really impressed, man, because to come into that team at that, that age and... We've seen it with Pep when he put Foden in and and um, 
who's the other guy that you had on the left wing the other night? I forget his Palmer. name. Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, bro, he he when he when he when he has a youngster that he likes, you can see why, man. He's not playing around. Yeah, he's, 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 that, he's that one in 100, Rico Lewis. We signed so many great players to our academy from a young age, um, even when 15, 16, and the majority of which never see any first-team football. It's only really when Pep really trusts a player, he'll give them that opportunity, particularly in a Premier League game. It's one thing to do it in a Carabao Cup or a pre-season, but to throw him out in our first Premier League game back when we're five points behind Arsenal in the league and trust him in Ellen Road, it's a massive thing. Um, he plays he with a lot of maturity. Good, he's a good player. He's a good player. I can see him good, developing he nicely. Good. He, look, he looks. He looks good. I can't lie. Like, that's, he's next I, I disagree with it. I disagree with the idea that Hart is boring. I think he's efficient. I think. I think I'm just annoyed because he's that good. I think he was he's efficient last finished. night, though. Sorry, you know, he wasn't finished. It wasn't great. Obviously, overall, mm. I think he's a little bit rusty. I think Pat Guardiola even said that. I don't think he's fit or something mm. like, along the lines. So much fit, but I think he's just. I'm insane. glad. I'm oh. glad Toby you raised that. <clears throat> You're gonna make this about Liverpool, aren't you? You're gonna make this about Liverpool, aren't you? Don't don't don't, make, don't compare Haaland to Nunes. The difference is when Haaland has a Liverpool half night, he still bags two. When Nunes has an half night, no goals against City last week after. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't say much because you didn't say much. No, you didn't, you <laughs> you didn't say yourself. anything. I did, you did not that say yourself. anything. I know you. <laughs> I know you too well. Fifty percent conversion rate versus <laughs> zero. I'm just saying we saw two great players. One goal scoring machine who's going to break every single Premier League record there is to break goal scoring terms, right? And one hundred million player who was said to be the best player in England, right? Miss. At least three to four chances each. Who said he's the best in Grealish was at the time, isn't it? Best English player, I said. Oh, I never said that. Grealish. I, I never said that. Grealish is a no, no, no. I, I, I didn't say you. I said people said that. You know what I mean? Not that you're not a person. Of course, you're, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> but people, but certain people said he's the best English player, hundred million year, right? And we've seen Haaland was going three, four chances. This is my point. You can miss chances, bros. You can miss chances. It's not a problem. Of course, Haaland's efficiency is next level. He still ended up bagging two tap-ins. But the fact remains, you can miss chances, man. It's not a problem. Not, not to the Life way, goes on. I don't want to jump on it. See, I'm only jumping it because I'm bitter from well, the last attack. If it costs from last point, week's attack. It? You know, it hasn't yet. It hasn't yet. It, it, it kicked you out of the cup, though, didn't it? Cup? Cup. What, we you, that don't mean nothing we to be, you? We beat we we kids in that cup. When it happens, I'm going to be <laughs> feel hurt and bitter. <laughs> I think well, Greenish has also he's had no look. Greenish, Greenish has had really no look. I feel bad for him in some ways because it's these kind of nights where he's getting his criticism, and I think it's it's deserved. It's deserved that the lack of finishing last night is absolutely justified criticism. But he's had so many games this season. I watch him on a week to week basis. Like those, Matisse, the game against you in the Carabao, he should yeah. have had a hat trick. How they didn't go in, I I have no idea why. But it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, isn't it? So, do, do you well, I'm gonna be, can I can I say something? Can I say very something? Bro, but sorry, Chris. I, 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 no, is it's just the way the cookie no. crumbles. But oh. I'm not I, I'm, I'm I'm not having that one because when I mentioned Grealish's need to sort of step up and be a hundred million pound player for Man City, this season, you were telling me you were telling me that oh he's playing well. It doesn't matter that he's not scoring. It doesn't matter that he's not doing X Y Z. These times he he took shots at Almiron. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Amaron is like one goal off like double figures for the season. Yeah, Amaron is on is, is, is on absolute smoke. And I'm, I'm sorry, Man City are literally the highest chance creators in the in the league. They're the team where you, you fill your boots as a as a forward. And credit to Grealish, I think he did well to set up um Haaland for, for the goals yesterday, right? But I also think that he needs to actually start delivering um delivering in terms of output more often and what beyond, we need to the ask output, beyond, oh, beyond the output I think he needs to consistently play well because these games I, I do agree I think I've seen an improvement in his performances for Man City this season but I think he needs to find the balance of both like it's not everyday GNA but you can't have no GNA I'm sorry for a hundred million pound player you can't have no GNA I'm can sorry I, you just can't. Can, I, can I come in though this is where we need to ask to I mean who what do you expect from Jack Grealish? Like, what when you look at Jack Grealish, where you bought it for 100 million, are you just expecting him to kind of help you towards a, a title in a few games here and there? Do you want him to be the pinnacle player? How do you judge him? You know, Jack Grealish. Because everyone's going to have a different outlook on Jack Grealish. Going to be like, right, well, where where is he? 
Show me what you I, have to do with people. Well, the, fir- the first thing I did was I assessed his stats and I realized that he was never a prolific goal scorer. And I've said this a yeah. few times. He scored, I think he scored 14 goals across two seasons at Aston Villa. And that's where he was the main man. You know, he was the but when when they asked how often did you give the ball to Jack Reedish, they said every time. And he still only scored 14 goals. So my thing was he was going to become a creative player, he was be- going to become an, a creative option. But I also knew he was not going to be the Jack Reedish that we saw at Aston Villa because every sign that Pep brings into Manchester City. Pep brings them in and molds them into the player that he wants. People like I saw Cam's complaining last night about Grealish being this flary, exciting player at Aston Villa, and then he's turned into a robot at Manchester City. And there is a part of me gets where he's coming from on the basis that Pep has changed his game, but Pep spotted something in Grealish's game clearly and said, right, I can use this guy's game and make it into what I want him to be. And that's what Pep's made him do. It's not the most rewarding role Grealish plays uh, at Manchester City. I do agree with Toby. He needs to find a better balance between good performance and statistics. His, stati- his stats do need to improve. But like I said, I feel bad for him because he's had a lot of very good performances this season. Last season, he was not, you know, he wasn't good enough. This season, massively improved, but he's not getting wait, the wait, stats. Wait, wait, wait. So, so you're admitting last season he wasn't good enough? I, feel, I said I all thought, along. I said all I along. I thought he was playing the way I thought he was playing the way Pep asked for him to play. Which? I thought he was playing the way Pep Guardiola asked him to play last season. That's what you and Steve told me. Mm. And now you're saying he wasn't I didn't, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear any of Buddy saying that Grealish was not good last season and from a Man City fan. I no, yeah. I, 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 all, all now, I've been, I've, all I was told was, nope, he's he's performing in the team. You got it. You got it, man. You got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. doing what Pep Guardiola asked. And now you've just it said... Was, it was always, it don't, question, don't question Pep. Said that. I'm saying, I'm saying in terms of... When I was saying this, when I was saying this earlier on this season, you were telling me, oh, no, oh, I've got a Grealish agenda. I've got X, Y, Z. You do, mate, you do. If if, if Pep's playing, he must be playing well. Go on, you tell me. What's changed? Well, the thing thing is, listen, I was happy with Grealish last season based on the fact that it was his first season. And we all know that pretty well every attacking player that's ever come to Manchester City under Pep has not the best first season. I was fine with it. I knew what he was doing. He was learning his trade and he's improved his performances this season. That's what I'm saying. I was happy with him last season. I'm happier with him this season. And I still think there's more to come. You're I'm happy, happy with so Jack you are Grealish. Happy. You are, you are happy I'm a happy guy. Go- Listen, so, so five years, years. we're going for a three-peat. Life is great. I'm a happy guy. I'm not going to give up about him. can't do that, man. You can't do that. Put the three-peat to the side. Yeah, put the three-peat to the side. Wait, where's the three-peat? I can't get away with that one there. You want in spite of Grealish. Yeah. That you want in spite of Jack Grealish. You have just said you are happy. So... If you were to I sign am. a player, for, if you were to sign another player for 100 million, you would be happy with the same kind of performances you saw from Jack Grealish last season. I just want to confirm that. Yes, right? No, I think no it's, I think it's circumstantial. No it's <laughs> I rest my case. It's I rest my case. If we, if we go down. if we go on by killing Mbappe for 100 million, I say no. But if you buy Jack Grealish from Aston Villa, I say oh, yes. My. Why is there caveat for Jack Grealish? Why is there caveat for Jack Grealish? There's no caveat for Nunes. There's no caveat for for, for Edom. There's no caveat for all the all these other big money players that have gone to other other, other clubs. Why do we have to treat Jack Grealish different because he plays for the best side in the league? That's Mm. that's my thing. Why? You've got a point. Why? Why are there? Why are there exceptions for Jack Grealish? Oh, it's a it's a pep system. Oh, he's doing this. Listen, listen, listen. There should be no exception. I I I get where you're coming from. I fully get where you're coming from. But what I'm saying is, while he's a part of a winning system and we're winning games, I'm not going to go in on that. Pep has a role for him. The team is winning. I'm not going to complain. But I do get where you're coming from. Trust me, I get where you're coming. from. I'm not asking you to complain. I'm just asking you to call a spade a spade. That's all. I'm, not, I'm not calling any spades, no spades. When we're winning okay, and Jack's a part of a winning team, but in two assists, oh, there you go, there you no go. spades to be called. I'm so happy. That. There's no spades, man. Wow. No spades. Fuck your spades. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, and, and what's mad is, I've, we said, this, I've said this. We he, got he, him! He's, 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 he's no, basically I, taking I get where you're both coming from. I get where you're both coming from. And, and there's basically yeah, acknowledged that what I was saying was valid. And then people say, I've got an agenda. I get where you're coming from. Fuck your spades. <laughs> we're looking. In, we're looking into this. We're we're looking into this because we're speaking on football on another level. But before yeah. I did content creation, before I did this show, if I was Hugh and Chelsea were winning titles, I wouldn't give two shits about any intricate little things. Like I wouldn't give a damn because at the end of the day, we're picking up titles and we're winning football matches. So it's only now because we're trying to get into the nitty gritty that we're really emphasizing on Grealish and his own individual performance. But I'm not going to lie to you. Before all of this. And when you watch maybe football when you're younger, you don't really give a damn. 
Why is not? Why, why is man- you? It's different because uh, Havertz and you was similar, Matisse. When you won the Champions League and you you had that beh- you know under the belt and you know people Toby was criticizing Havertz. You know you're defending because you 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 won some things. You was reaching finals. Now the you know now it's not so bad. It's not rosy anymore. You can you know admit that his hit you know deficiencies. Yeah, yeah. You, you analyze things differently. But I just don't understand why it has to be like that. Like, I'm not asking you to go in on Jack Grealish, but when someone's saying that Jack Grealish hasn't been good enough, why do you have to lie and say, oh, no, I'm happy with his performance? Don't lie. Just just tell the truth. Just maybe tell the truth. Maybe he's not lying. Nobody's asking, is, nobody is asking you to get, to get a sledgehammer and attack your own player. But when we're saying he's not he's not set the world like alight, he's like not me, yeah? to the standard. Like me, like me. To the standards no, that no, no, not you. Like, not you, Bryce, mate. Don't, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I get you, Tom. I get you. But you know what? I, I, I get both your points because he, he's also right in the sense where when things are going well, it's he, as a supporter of that team, that club, you're not going to dwell on yeah, of course, yeah. and talk about much the the problematic areas or the areas of concern. That's fine. You are right as well because a hundred million. Listen, I've said it before. It's crazy he, money. Bro. Who actually thought Greenish was gonna was gonna prove his worth? I don't think anyone did. Nobody did. Yeah, bro. And and Turkish. The only reason the only reason why I bring it up is because like I, I don't think it's fair that teams that teams that aren't performing as well as Man City have players who are in a similar predicament to Man City, and those players are getting shredded to pieces. And Jack Grealish is just there coasting and performing at similar level to these guys, and I nothing gets said. It's it's crazy. Sancho has been ridiculed. Nunes has been ridiculed. Pepe got ridiculed. And R- Dom got ridiculed. Havertz got ridiculed. Like every single big money sign. Lukaku. I hear Lukaku it. got shredded to smithereens last season. But, but I think like, that's it, where you're it, doing it, too I much. I don't, I, don't I, don't, I don't think it's fair. Yeah. I, that's, Grealish that's is doing a hell of a lot more than Sancho. I don't think that's a fair fair sentence. But, no, no, no. You're not listening, bro. You're taking it. You're taking it. You're taking my point too. Too, too in a too, too in the detail. I'm talking about players who have gone for big money and have not banged yet. That's the point I'm making. Of course, there's a, to some degree one's done better than the other, but the point is these guys have not banged. Why is it Grealish that gets off scot free? No, just what, what, listen, what you're saying is for a hundred million, Grealish had to come in and be our star, star player. I didn't say he had to be a star player. I didn't have to say he had to be a star player. I said that he has some role. It's not a role. And you know, you know, even smacks it as well. Yeah, you and Steve have gone in on Raheem Sterling, and I hate to bring it up again. You've gone in on Raheem Sterling, and you bought this guy for hundred million, and he's not even giving you half of what Raheem Sterling gave Man City. So, so, so when I'm when I'm seeing you, when I'm seeing you, when I'm seeing you, that's a sticky one. That's a sticky. Sterling was so sticky. It's It's fact. Sterling was good for City. I agree. Nobody, no City fan can tell me right now that Grealish is performing better than Sterling was for Man City. The disrespect's been weird. I think the disrespect maybe it's because of the way he left. It is weird. I agree with you. I think I think the disrespect for Sterling at Man City when I said that he could be potentially a legend for all he's done statistically for what he's done at your club. The way that you man just disregarded him and dispatched him like as if he was nothing. But he didn't sign that shirt. He didn't sign that shirt. Because he didn't sign a shirt. I think it's ridiculous. I think, it, yeah. I think for that point there, you just made Sterling versus Greedish. It's not even a comparison. Who? who I, I think it's, it's, not, it's, not it's not what we're saying. Close. In terms of Hugh, he's allowed to feel what he is allowed to feel. And don't get me wrong. He's gonna back. Don't get me wrong. I think it's when don't get me wrong. Exactly. <laughs> 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 when as rival fans are judging him. They're saying it's no, it's completely fine and he's doing okay and he's winning trophies. Yeah, that's, that's OG where, team. Yeah, that's where it kind of comes. But like I said, man, you know what I mean? Um, I think Sterling, though, what he did at City is crazy. Oh, listen, Raheem, Raheem Sterling is, um, I've, I've got yeah. a lot of love for him. He's given me so, so many great moments. But I, I think every City fan will agree that his last 18 months, two years, he went, like, he, he really fell off from what he was. Like, when he first arrived and his first. Three, four seasons, he was on fire. He banged. He banged. I actually agree. I actually agree with uh, uh, Huey, man. I and the, and then he sort of fell off a little bit, and he wasn't delivered, and he wasn't getting but the games from he wanted. Can I ask one thing? Can I ask one thing, Huey? I haven't asked you a question yet, and mine's a proper football question. It's no like bait question. Like, how many moments has uh, Grealish given you? Like, he's been there season and a half, nearly now, possibly third, whatever. How many moments has he really given you? Where you think, yeah, Jack Grealish. Hundred million, my brother. Uh, Be honest, or you can lie. It's up to you. We catch you up. <laughs> every, every week, every week, Chris. All the, no, listen. So he chose to lie. <laughs> no, listen. Has he given no, you I'll, one I'll moment? I'll keep it real. I'll keep it real. I'll keep it real. There, there hasn't like he he scores. He scored a few goals. Last time away, I think last season. 
think it was he scored. Yeah, he scored. He he basically I'm got us. One wild moment. I can't. I haven't heard one wild moment. I've been thirty seconds. Well, I've been put over. I've been put over a few times. I've been put over a few times. I've. I know that's part of the trick. But but listen, he he got us that point at West Ham last season. That if we don't win that, if we don't get that point, we don't win the league. That's probably his thing. He dragged us through that game, uh, and that's that's what I'll give him right now. Fair, fair. And like I said, he just—he's not got amazing stats, but he affects games. And that's where he's he does affect actually, games. Like I said, I it's a really good reward. Does. Oh, what Jack Grealish does. I didn't, I I didn't, even, I didn't even call I him a flop. I think Grealish, is, I think Grealish is a quality player. And my, 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 my thing is, the player I saw at Aston Villa, like, this is a guy who legitimately is a game changer. Like, he changes games for his team. And granted, yeah. he's going to Man City where you've got players that are already on his level or higher. But when I'm seeing... And I'm not using Leeds as an example because I think he did actually impact the game in the end. But when I'm seeing his performances week in, week out, I'm not seeing a, a, a guy who... And to be fair to him, I don't think he. it helps that there, there were games where he was playing well and then Pep Guardiola was just removing from the team. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that. But I'm not seeing a guy most weeks that is actually... Um, a net positive for Man City. When when Man City are winning these matches, I don't think they're winning it. And he's 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 a part of that. I think they're winning it, and he's just there. No, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong on that one. I think last season you you probably would have been right on that, and you know almost entirely. But this season, I've I've said it all along, and I still believe it that when we've had a front three of Grealish, Hall, and Foden, that's our most effective. and efficient front three. I think he's massively impactful. He just doesn't have the stats to back it. This season, his performances have been when he's on the pitch, apart from last night, even though he picked up two assists, really good. A massive, massive improvement uh, on what we saw last season. I, I can't, I really can't um, stress that anymore. And it is frustrating for me, and I think most City fans, that those games that he wasn't selected for, that he should have been selected for, that's how, how is he meant to build confidence? How is he meant to feel good about himself? Dude, he should have played, played against Liverpool that day. That was a I massive agree. opportunity for him to I burn agree. James Milner and show what he can do on the big stage. And he played so well for weeks before. A goal at Wolves, good performances around that too. So selection isn't going his way either as well. It, it's it's very circumstantial with Jack Grealish. Listen, mm-hmm. But like I said, I want the bottom line to be, I get where all of you are coming from. Trust me, I'm not blind to what you're saying. But while life is good, and I believe he is being a positive impact when he's in the pitch most of the time, mate, I'm sitting here happy. That's just being real. Hour 20, and we ain't even talked about the mighty Chelsea, man. Sickening. Mighty Chelsea, mate. Bloody hell, sorry, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You man got um, Everton this weekend at home. Everton, they just lost to Wolves, a last-minute winner for Wolves. Um, Yeah, it's, it's looking peak over there. Uh, yeah, it. listen, Everton are um, they're in turmoil a bit right now, aren't they? The yeah. fans are on the fans are on Lampard's back. They're not playing well. Last minute losses to Wolves and that. I would think them coming to the Etihad is the last place they want to go in the world right now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to predict a fairly straightforward win in four nil City. Bury them. Four nil City, Said. Yep, exactly what I was going to say. Four nil Manchester City. <laughs> Yo, Cam's is a trigger. <laughs> Ed, what's he said? Well, he, said in the chat. he just said, oh, I've just got here and I heard Chelsea. <laughs> I'll see myself out. This guy, fam. <laughs> I'm going to start calling him Connor Culture, man. <laughs> All right, cool. So he's gone 4 0 as well, Grizz. 3 0. 3 0. Tobes. 3 0. 3-0. Matisse. 4-0. I don't know who they're playing, but 4-0. <laughs> Everton. That's what I'm saying. This is Everton. Yeah. <laughs> People have seen that like, uh, Everton voice note, that Everton fan. The voice note. That was hilarious, man. Send it to me, please. Oh, yeah, it's too much. Yeah, send it in the group, man. I ain't seen that. Yeah. What's that? Everton fan voice note or something. I don't know. Nah, Everton fan voice note. Yeah, put in the group. Put in the group. Um... Right, a few four nils, a couple three nils. I'm going four nil as well. Cool, that wraps it up. Four four nils, couple three nils, and that's the Man City predictions done. But we've got some super chats on the Man City subject. Where are we? Ethan says, Arsenal fan here. Message for Hugh Do you see us as a threat in the title race? Yes, absolutely. Cool, Lord. AJ says, Rodri was man of the match, but it won't get noticed because he isn't sliding all over the pitch. 
like that mattress Casemiro. Mm. What I'm saying is, man, whenever we claim to have okay. the best player in a certain position, everyone goes mad. City can't have the best player in any position. You're disrespecting this guy. I, I rate Casemiro so highly. I think you misquoted me, already. Mis me a little bit. Casemiro is a bad, bad man. But what I'm saying is, for me right now, in my team, and what I think, I just prefer Rodri. That's it. There's when, no, there's no deepness to it. There's nothing more. No, no, no. It's just preference. The fans are getting rattled because the king has arrived. The king's come and showed no, up. No, no, I like that. I like that. You know what I mean, the I'm quality. With you. I'm with you. Thank you, Chris. But to say that you only slide in the pitch. I mean, AJ, come on, man. Let's not play around, yeah. Let's not play around. <laughs> uh cool. That's that's the super chats on Man City. Chris, I'm just going to head back to you straight away because you discussed Gakpo, you discussed Liverpool at the moment. Aston Villa three-one away win, good away win, and you got Leicester this. This coming weekend, no, not, not this weekend. This tomorrow. If right, when, when do you not play? Tomorrow. Tomorrow night, yeah. Um, Leicester at home at Anfield. So, what are you telling me? Uh, Leicester at home, bro, man. If we don't win this, man, it's peak in it. I'm, I'm, like, I'm gonna be sick next week. Yeah, Leicester have just come back and. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna be sick. I'm, I'm telling you lot now. I'm gonna be. No, I'm not gonna be. No, I'm not gonna be well. So. We have to win. We've got three wins in a row. We need to get four wins in a row, then five, then six. We just need to keep piling on and try and find some consistency. You know what I mean? Gakpo is not eligible tomorrow. People yeah. asking, do you think he's going to come in? No, he's not coming in tomorrow. Pretty much same team. Maybe Konate back in. I would personally throw Konate back who, in. Who asked you that? About what? Gakpo coming in tomorrow. It's the 30th of December. How would that work? I don't know. Yeah, some people exactly. were asking, innit? Yo, let me talk to my people, innit? Why are you? Wow. You, better you don't educate, like. You better educate your people, then. That's you don't wild. like talking to your, you. don't like talking to your people because you've gone to support Man City. I took that. <laughs> <to support laughs> wow. yes, coming, coming from the yes, Arsenal yes, fan. Yes, coming yes, from yes. the Arsenal. I was, I was actually just about to recommend you as the Arsenal host I of the show. I support my team. Let me support my team. Let me support the my Arsenal people. Yo, fan people. is talking. I'm talking to my people. Please, I'm talking to my people. Chat. Ask away, chat. Ask away. No, he's not eligible tomorrow. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, man, we should we should hit him nice and early and and, and then relax because Aston Villa was was tricky. Even though three one looked comfortable, it was tricky. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna predict uh, two nil. Two nil. Where are we? Two nil. Tobes, Liverpool, Leicester. I'm predicting 3 0. 3 0. Matisse? Um, ah, I'm going to give him 3 1. 3 1. Um, I'm going 3 0 as well. You? 2 0. 2? Yeah, 2, yeah. 2 0. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to go 3-0. 3-0 as well. A lot of clean sheets. 1-3-1 one, one there from Matisse. Um, any super chats coming on the subject? Not necessarily, but Big Ash says, Grizz is a legend. It needs to be said. Big up all you guys. The Big Six originals are miles ahead. Best wishes for the new year. Thank you, Ash. Love for the love as always, man. Um, really appreciate You're asking about the website. Watch the show and whatnot. Huh? a couple of chat asking about a website not working well it worked for the last round i'll i'll, I'll holler at the guy and maybe he's even watching now but yeah i'll message him after and, and and see if he can open it up so by tomorrow morning it'll be opened up people i'll even message him now when we move on to the next subject so give it a couple of hours and we'll sort that out um, i see um clock compared newness to Lewandowski. no i didn't see that i just seen that now yeah with the detail, <laughs> he just compared him to <laughs> what's Scott had to drink over Christmas. No, he you just, know? he just look, I'm just reading it on BBC Sport. He just too much beer, he needs to put the beer down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are you are you paraphrasing again? No, it's, it's there in the headline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, listen, exactly, just, that's my point. You just I'm read just, the headline. I just, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, God, I don't think they're gonna uh, so you're, 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 you shouldn't have said it. Anything. 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 I think no, you're better than that. Matisse, calm down, calm down. You know how Grizz get when you I'm mentioned. I'm reading the quote. Cup. I'm going to read you the quote. Calma, calma. Um, I think Lover would tell the same story. We had shooting sessions. <laughs> we didn't finish off one. We had. He cussed him actually. For ten years. Yeah, no, he's he cussed him. So he, he didn't compare. So he, he, what he said was, I need to work on his training. We're going to work with him. He's young. That's what he said. But the headline said he compared him to Lewandowski. Do better. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when it comes to Grizz, when it comes to Grizz and something that Jurgen Klopp says, this guy, yeah, yeah, he's very. Yeah, when he's fake. Yeah. 
Hatfield when he's fake. Rose in Hatfield Hatfield Hatfield. Hatfield. Ride or die, that's it. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, fake. I'm just delivering the information over to you. Yeah, you yeah can, when it's fake. You can take it, you could go chat to them yourself. I'm you, just, we I'm already just know what the BBC, the we, we already know how the BBC reported the World Cup and we know it's the best World Cup. So we know about it about fake news. Mud, mud, mud. Yeah, cool. Let's move, keep it moving because it's an hour and a half in. And we still got four predict well, four results to get through and four predictions to get through. I'm gonna move it over to Toby next. Brentford 2 0 up. You fight back again, this time not for three points. Um there was a super chat earlier. Let me just bring this one up first. Question for Tobes. Are you not embarrassed about how you man celebrated that draw, or do you see it as a point gained rather than two dropped? Yeah, that, that's a good question still, because obviously, you know, being two nil down. Um, and taking a point is a good thing, but when you couple it up with the results prior to the World Cup and having to come back and you know starting games poorly, ten is becoming somewhat a trend now. Um, is it a point gained or is it a bit of the same? There's two points dropped to be honest. Um, in the moment, you celebrate the goal, right? Like you'd have to be a really weird football fan to not celebrate your team um, scoring a goal to to get yourself um, on level terms with, with, from 2 no down. Like, it, when it says embarrassed by celebrating, like, I was at the game and every single fan celebrating when when um, when Hoybier scored that second goal. Because more often than not, when we have got the equaliser in these games, we've then gone on to win. So it, it felt like we could have gone on to get that third goal. But generally, are we happy about the result? No, it's... It's embarrassing that we have to keep picking ourselves up from losing positions to 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 get back into the game. Um, we tried it against Liverpool; it didn't work. Um, we 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 had to do it against Leeds and and got off and basically escaped with three points for free. Um, we tried to do it against Newcastle; it didn't work. Right, so it's not good, man. It's not good I, and. We spoke about it on on this on this show. I didn't expect Spurs to win that game, um, and I didn't expect us to win that game simply because I felt like our defense isn't good enough, and we were just going to be quite lethargic in our performances, and that's what happened. I assume I had a had a poor game to say. Yeah, that. I think I was, that's probably. That's probably the worst game I've seen from Basuma in the Spurs. What's show. going on with yeah. Basuma, man? I was such it's, a it's, fan of him, man. What is it? I don't think it's still him. What is it? I don't. I think it's weird because, like, before the World Cup break, he was getting into some good form, man. Like, mm. or decent form, should I say? He was play. He was playing better, right? He was. He was finally getting a consistent run of games. Um, maybe not by choice because, but me because we had the injury, he was playing, but. He started to play well, and I, I look back on there were games this season, like when he came on against Everton, um, when he came on against Leicester, even the game he started against Liverpool. He was one of our best players against Liverpool. Um, Liverpool's midfield couldn't really get close to close to Basuma in in, oh, in the God. second half in the second half of that game. But <laughs> that Brentford game, I don't know, man. It just that was his opportunity now to play in a two because Benton calls out, and he just didn't take the opportunity. And what? Worries me is that now Conte is just gonna go back to his tried and trusted. Benton calls fit for Aston Villa. I can see Basuma dropping straight back to the bench, and it doesn't really do anyone any favors. It really doesn't. I wanna. I also think he's not the only one, man. I think Son was was smelly, man. Like in terms of performance, <laughs> but, uh, but I'll be honest with you, like his performance was dreadful. I man. think. I think that's. A, I think it's. I think the Sun ones is no, for, the for the standards that we know Son of, I think his standards have dropped. I think he's lost a yard of pace for me. He, he, he no. looks very... Listen, we know technically-wise he's not the greatest. He's more final third player. He comes alive and we know him. Unbelievable finisher. But I just look at Son and I think even the World Cup I was talking about, I was thinking... He was rubbish in the World Cup. Injury, I, I get it. It's, you know, it's, it's South Korea, but... He just looked every time there was an opportunity to kind of move and kind of you know Spurs were on the attack, he lose the ball. He just looked a bit. I don't know. I don't know if he's if he's if it's a sport. Was, like I said, it's, it happens. Son is, you know? son, is play, son is just in this ridiculous rut. Like he's been so bad. He's been awful this season. He's only scored in two matches for Spurs. He's been terrible for the most part this season. But oh, I'm over the season, that, right? Um, yeah, over the season. I'm looking at that Brentford game though, and it's poor, man. He wasn't. Nah, I, I think. I, I think the Brentford game. I think 
he was probably him and Kulisevsky were the only ones trying in the first half. Second half, I think his performance faded. But like, take Harry Kane for instance. Harry Kane scored in that game, but some played better than Harry Kane in that game. Harry Kane did nothing, and then pops up with a pops up with a header, and everyone's like, "Oh no, Kane! He rescued him. He pulled him out of the mud." And even Hoybier as well. Like, you know how much I like Hoybier. Came up, scored the vital goal in the second half. But the way people are going in on Basuma, Hoybier was just as bad in the first half. He was terrible, absolutely terrible. And it wasn't just them; it was the whole team. Like Eric, Eric Dial didn't didn't come about this guy. They didn't, they didn't play well, and 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 that's what's annoying me is well. it's like Brentford. Brentford credit to Brentford to be fair because they 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 pressed us well when the ball got into our midfield. But like I didn't think Brentford were playing particularly well. I felt for the most of the second half they were just pumping the ball long, and the fact that. It, it, we were able to score two goals in such quick succession shows you that this is a game that we could have easily won had we had, had our foot on the gas pedal from the from the jump, but we we didn't. So it's the way the cookie crumbles, man. We need Eric. new players, and we need we need we need our current players to step up, and we need our manager to sort of pick the right players in the right moments and you, deploy you, the best tactics. Are you ready to say Eric Dyer is not good enough now? He said it a long time ago, I think. I don't, I don't, but Matisse, yeah, I, don't, I don't rate yeah. Dyer like that. I just, pre, I, I just gave him credit because he did his, he, he did his job for Conte last season. Nobody can tell me that Eric Dyer wasn't good for Spurs last season, but I don't rate Dyer highly. I don't rate him. And if the club were to sell Dyer today, I wouldn't lose a shred of sleep. I would not lose any sleep whatsoever. Mm, fair. I, I, Even I, yeah, him. you guys need two more centre backs, man. Your defence is yeah, easy. Like, for what you know of a Conte team, a Conte team is actually meant to be defensively resolute. And then going forward, people will have their question marks in, in rough patches of form or whatever. But the defence is leaking goals. Like, there's no tomorrow. Like, just ridiculous goals. The defending was just, for both goals, just stupid. Just yeah. dumb. Dense shit. Like, no need for any of it. He had no pressure on him to, to take that. He could have took a touch and played it out. He just sliced it out for a corner. It's just, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm shocked with your defence. Because I was thinking, I was actually thinking when I saw the starting lineups, I said, oh, starting lineup comes out. There's no Emerson Royale. Toby's going to be delighted, man. He's going to be absolutely, there's no chicken Royale to, to ruin his day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Tangaga's in there. But, and then Tangaga they just, they still out. find a way to, they still find a way to do dumb shit. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, like, it's just, it's just inherent, man. We don't, we need to attack I don't want to labour too much on Spurs, but we just, we need a, we need a significant upgrade. Like even Eric Dyer, as poor as he's been in recent weeks, like Eric Dyer wouldn't be as much of an issue if he was if he was actually a rotational player. If he was a repl- mm-hmm. if he was a player that was coming in and out of the team, and we had a first choice there, I wouldn't even be too mad at Eric Dyer being around. But the problem is we've had these guys in and around the team for so long, and um, bench Drake's got a bar um, on um, on Tuscan level when he's like he goes. Bench players talking like starters. I hate it. And yeah. we've actually got Spurs players, bench players at our peak are now starters. <laughs> and and it's it doesn't seem like it doesn't look like the club are doing everything in their power to make sure these guys are back to being rotation players. Are no, you, we keep having to see them start week in, week out, week in, week out. Are you not worried about Tottenham long term in terms of like Champions League aspirations after this season if because if, if Conte does go and you don't back him, then obviously, like you said, that will be a massive indictment on the club and the way that you're run and, and um, Kane as well. you know, what, what, aspirations. What, 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 but what, what, what are you saying here that we don't because, really... What, what well, I mean, yeah, but are you, are you concerned? Long because I, I've always Con- been concerned about these owners. Concerned. I've always been concerned. The hope was that with Conte in the mix, I mean, they have to, they have to give every. every they have to give this guy what, what he needs, right? If you want him to stay, if you really are invested in the, his his vision for the club, you have to give him everything you need. But the end of the summer, the, the end of the Quiet summer, they just told me that this club, then when it comes down to the nitty gritty and you want to, you need to back a manager 100%, not 60%, not 70%, not 50%, they won't do it. And I think it's a good, it's a good point. What do you want me to do? Hurricane someone if you don't get Champions League football, and like I said, if Conte doesn't get back, Conte leaves. Hurricane then leaves, and then Son, who again is he past his best? You know, it's not the future's not bright at Tottenham. He could, he could All of a sudden, it looks a bit different. And yeah, I don't, I'm not going to deny that it does. No, no, absolutely not. I'm just saying. Uh, you know? I'm not going to deny that. Around, I think. I think. Around, man. 
I think what's important is we actually have an ownership that that are actually comp- that actually want to make this team competitive, and we have an ownership yeah. that actually want to stick to a philosophy. Do you want to start a project? Do you want to go for a win now? You can't do both. You can't have your one foot in one door, one foot in another door. You have to pick pick a journey and stick to it. Yep. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, I've been rambling on no, about no, this. It's so good, man. It's okay, okay. Man. We, are, we understand. Let it out, man. Let it out. We man. understand. Even I've seen expressions going mad. And when you see expressions going mad, yeah, and he's talking about the owners and that, that's when you know sitting's going on and you get me so... Yeah, I mean, it's stress, man. It's stressful time. But then again, yeah, there's a fourth. What do you mean You'll stressful? Pay, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. We can, we, I still think we. I still think we'll get Champions League this season for what it's worth. I still think we'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just shows you how stressful. Beyond that, that I don't know. You Newcastle you deserve their respect. You know, obviously, you know it's United, Chelsea. Uh, I don't know where you guys ninth, tenth, think something like that. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I was asking you that. I was asking you that. No, 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 no. I don't even know where you said you guys are. No, 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 no. I'm just looking so down. I can't even see you guys. No, 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 no. You might, you might get your money up, man. Get your money up. But yeah, I think it's stressful ties, but it's stressful ties. Get your money up, man. I don't think Tottenham are making top four now. You're on mute, Turkish. Oh, sorry. Aston Villa at home, Tobes. You might as well move on to that. Uh, um, I'm going to go for 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one win, yeah? Uh, mm-hmm. wow. 2-1. Matisse. Ooh. Wait, Aston Villa at home? No, no. Tottenham at home. Sorry, shit. <sighs> hmm. The way Aston Villa defended, fuck, man. <laughs> Why are you trying to infiltrate people's brains? Uh, three two Tottenham. I'm gonna Please. go. They they concede the first two goals again. Fuck it, I have to get one. <laughs> right, they, they, they keep doing this, and I don't keep. I, I don't predict. Who's gonna score for Aston Villa? Right, I don't know anybody, man. You you might well make anyone score. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tough one. Three. Make, nah, two one. Two one. <laughs> two one Tottenham. You. Two nil Tottenham. Two nil. Faid. 2-1 Tottenham. 2-1 and Grizz. 2-0 Tottenham. 2-0. All Tottenham wins. Different. A few 2-1s there. A couple 2-0s. 1-3-2 three, two from Matisse. Um, some super chats came in earlier about Tottenham. <laughs> Is a tongue-in-cheek one. Told, what was your inspiration in supporting Spurs? Was it forced upon you? <laughs> he's, been asked, he's been asked this question so many times. People are just Look at his people face. are dumbfounded as to why anyone would choose to support on But he might not know, win it? Or he might not know, bro. Next super chat. Yeah, I know, I but Tony can't handle this. New subscriber. We got new subscribers with yeah, the time, man. Everyone know your story. Bro. Can't handle the story. <laughs> it's traumatic. All right, listen, tell us one more time. From now on, I answer for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I said no. <laughs> um, I still Too remember. Uh, I still said remember nobody ever. That's this this super chat is a no, it was Doherty. Lie. It was actually Tobes who said Doherty, not, re, not, not downright lie. It said Doherty at Wolves, Matisse. Relax, bro. Nobody cares, bro. It's still fucking <laughs> Relax, horrendous bro. opinion. Still, tell, tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, innit? Tell Reese James to get his knees up, man. Let's, oh, let's, wow. let's Incredible Hulk drip and more knees, yeah? <laughs> Listen, you would kill for him regardless. Even if he was injured, you'd take him on one leg. I would. I would take him with one knee over Emerson Royale. You're right. <laughs> Well, it says Tobes. Part of the problem is that Conte's demands can be ridiculous sometimes, and backing him hundred percent is not viable. Every club has arguments with him eventually, but Spurs still need to meet him halfway. They don't back anyone one hundred percent. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. And the right. guy who's most likely to end your trophy drought, you don't want to back him one hundred percent. Come on, man. They did get sack the, really for a cup final. They really don't. They don't want the trophy. Get them out of here, man. They they get them out of it. Um, here's one earlier for the Man City. For what Grealish is producing, performing now, was there someone cheaper City could have got to do what he's doing? Probably, but it is yes. what it is. We're not going to delve back into the Grealish stuff because we talked about it for way too long as it is. Right, Arsenal, West Ham. Um, yeah. Yes, Jones. <laughs> what would you say? It's <laughs> 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 Jones. He's like, you know, Jones, nah, isn't nah, it? Nah, nah, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard that oh. brother's name in a while. <laughs> 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 
back. <laughs> He's, he's not even always biting. about Liverpool. He's Every not even biting. Oh, Arsenal works out. Let's move. Keep it moving. He's no. right. <laughs> yeah, man. Keep Arsenal it moving. Time. Listen, 3 1 win and 1 0 down. I know when we're going to Yeah, don't worry. Eddie done his thing for that goal. Um, a lot of pressure was on him. And he had, to, he had to hit the ground running. And I think he did. Overall, he had a decent performance. Um, but he needed that goal to kind of. It's a lovely finish, you know, that, you know. Th- yeah. That is a very, very good finish. Yeah, you know, that was Striker's goal. Yeah, Striker's yeah. goal. I know there's a lot of comparisons to Wright. I see in the comments as well. But um, listen, Wright was yeah, Wright was something else. But I can understand why there's similarities, um, comparisons coming out because that finish in the turn and all that was righty esque. So I, I understand that. But yeah, um, like I said, it's, it's yeah, it's early days for that comparison to say the least. If you could never make it, I don't know. I doubt it. But he needed that goal. Um, Saeed mentioned Odegaard earlier and I think everyone's yeah. been mentioning Odegaard off the back of it, our top scorer in the league joint with Martinelli, a couple assists for him but it's not about goals and assists with Odegaard, I think he needed it to to stop fans getting on his back because a lot of you know opposition fans in particular would, would look at his goals, assists and, and make judgments based just off of that but the eye test with Odegaard, if you watch Odegaard play you know he's a cultured footballer, he pulls the strings, he gets the he, he creates the chances in the first half. We, you know, didn't score a goal, but he was the one that was kind of standing out. Um, and Saka and Martinelli, you know, they did their thing off the wings. Um, Saka got the first goal, Martinelli got the second goal. Eddie got the third. I know it, it, it was Jordan on Forever Arsenal and a couple other fans said, yeah, does he score the first goal? Does he score the winners? Does he score the equalizers? To me, the third goal in, in a match like that, is as important as any because, you know, there was still something left to play for for West Ham where that goal kind of finished off the game. So I won't dismiss Eddie's goal like that in particular. I think he deserves the credit for his goal. But yeah, overall, Arsenal, a lot of doubters, a lot of people, you know, wanted to see what would look like without Jesus, still very early days. But yeah, um, we move. Look at you three on the phone. You're you, you tired of Arsenal. Bored, I'm right? bored of Arsenal, man. Bored. Show some respect to your title contenders. I lie, when Chelsea were flying, he was bare on it. When t- oh, t- nah, I wasn't. I, I, thought was, you already I was getting left to the back of the show, not even getting a little, little 10 minute yeah. segment from it. was long. Yeah, I thought we already spoke about Arsenal. Long, man. Really? We spoke about Arsenal already, man. Long. Let's speak about the game. <laughs> I actually watched the game, to be fair. Call, call me when you way, man lose, man. It was one way traffic, barred that penalty. And I think that penalty was some bozo, bozo moments from Saliba. It wasn't not sharp, the, it? Not the first time this season, but. Um, Listen, I still think he, he went on to have a, a good game. But, yeah, I, I think Odegaard dumped on him. Yeah. Um, Eddie and Ketty are, yeah, I thought he played well. Yeah. It was a really good performance from Arsenal. Is yeah, that what you want? I think, you I think, can I, 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 Martinelli is clever as well because he doesn't expect yeah. Martinelli to hit that on his left foot and Martinelli just gambles and and, and and it pays off, man. I think quite smart from Martinelli personally, but Fabianski, man, boy. And Lawless was bragging about how good this goalkeeper is. But oh, anyway. I think I think there comes a point where we need to start discussing West Ham and how shit they are and how shit they are this season, especially this season. And they're gonna die at dog's death because because like they, they 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 play the same team, same midfield every game for the last three years. It seems mm. like uh, Rice and Suchek every minute, every Europa League, every game. That's what they got. But I, I want to talk about Arsenal like very, very briefly, very quickly. I think that's a huge win, you know. Mm. Ask me why. No. Why? Why, Grace? <laughs> because look, after World Cup, people are looking to Arsenal to come down. Yeah, like people are thinking, yeah, the bubble's gonna burst. Yeah, no Gabriel Jesus. No, uh, who else was missing? There was one other guy. I think oh, he came off the bench. But Tim... okay, okay, but but the doubts are there. Like you know, World Cup hype. You know, few their players coming back. No, Gabriel Jesus. West Ham gonna make it stiff. They go a goal down again at home. You know, what I mean, West Ham are notorious. If if West Ham are gonna do anything in a game, it's when they take a lead, and then Moyes' dinosaur tactics come into place. 
I think I think Arsenal showed that they've got the fight and the mental attitude to come through man, man, these so. situations. But, but, but Grace, so, so I, I think I think no, let me just quickly finish quickly because I know you lot don't like this bit. Yeah, but no, I it's think it's, that. I, it's it's no, it's that it's that it's that. No, I don't think I, it is that. I, 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 I think I think I think used to I think used to particularly. I think you two have been particular need to heap more praise on. on I think I think I think I'm looking at the clock. Okay, let's me down. Myself, okay, let's me down. I'm thinking okay. to myself, we ain't got time for this. If, okay, if let's you, me down. you know, if you man didn't do like a whole 40 minute Grealish section, then we wouldn't be in this mess. But I would have had a whole I, Bible, I, biblical. Test, test I, I, didn't ask for, I didn't ask for that Grealish. I, I would have had a whole. <laughs> I would have had a whole <laughs> Harry Potter but, book of Arsenal. Compliment. I didn't ask for that. I didn't. I'm ask afraid. For the I'm afraid you ran out of time. I told you you were passionate about that Grealish one, so. No, I just don't. Like, I don't. I just don't like people. Just yeah. I don't like. Cons- I don't like a lack of consistency. That's all. I think That's for all. me, just to kind of round off Grizz's point, I think the test is now Brighton, Newcastle, you know, Man City, and and the the one that beat them this season, the one that you know Arteta got destroyed by ten hours. That's where we have to wait. So <laughs> Arsenal fans, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? The guy, you know, we're gonna humble you. You know, when is it? Of January. You think that was the game? Ten hours. Man, we're we'll let we'll let everyone else do their thing. When ten hours comes to that Emirates and and, and silences you all lot here and humbles <laughs> you, that's when we'll be. You know what I mean? We're giving yeah, when are you gonna be humble? Nobody else is doing anything. Maybe ten hours has to come back and do it again. Maybe. Wow. Nah, man. If you play like that again, if you play like that again and they we'll don't we'll open we'll themselves run. up on the counter, they'll beat you, bro. What, what are you yeah. talking about? Well, no, don't if they play like that again and party... You like, they, 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 that's the only difference is, is oh, party in Lokonga. You're playing against Lokonga. It's ridiculous what this guy's saying. Fucking Lokonga in the And that game, Casemiro didn't play, by the way. Casemiro didn't play. Party didn't play either. Neither did party. Yeah. Listen, all I'm saying to you, yeah, is that yeah, let me just. I, I, and like I said, it's just a side comment from, from the fact. <laughs> the test, no, no, let's just, let's just, let's just keep that. Let's just put it over there and come no, back I mean, to it later. Let's just have to put it out there, man. Just relax just yourself. Put, put it, that you know? over there. We'll be back. We'll be back for that. We'll be back. <laughs> No, but all this talk about this, this, you can't say this is the test because how like how many times are we gonna hear this is the test? What it is is no, but the next um, four games are a big test. Though. Of course they are, of course they yeah. are. But so so was a few of the games before the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, I agree. I think you lot beat Liverpool, you beat us, you beat Chelsea. So you've definitely passed some hard tests nice. already. But oh, I do I, I don't agree with Grizz that oh right, like this was such an important win because I feel like I feel like even though you lost Jesus. The other key part, the, the main part, the, the, the main engine in your team, the midfield, was still unscathed. Party, Odegaard and Jack has still played. You still had Saka out wide. You still I, had Mark out wide. I, I think and the only people... I think sec, the only people... One, one sec. And you still had you still had the entire back four available. So I do think that with the other pieces still in still in tow, you can still make up for, for no Jesus. And with, with all... With maximum disrespect, with maximum disrespect, West Ham are absolutely dog shit right now. And there was nothing, there was no way on earth I saw anything but a convincing Arsenal win um, in that in that game. So when Grizz is saying, oh, this was a big win, I don't really think any Arsenal fan, I don't think any Arsenal fan I spoke to expected anything but a win against West Ham. Not I one. agree with yeah. that. I agree with that, but I, I went through the emotional side of it, the mental side of it, and the eventual context behind the game. Now, mm-hmm. with all due respect, with all due respect, only me and Huey here know what it's like to get those wins where maybe you're not at your best, things may be not going your way, you're dominating the game, the other team take the lead, you ain't got your star man, and you make sure you win that game. With all due <laughs> respect, you know what I mean? Have I never won? Try to say that all you want. In the context of the game, in the context of the game, that's a massive, massive, massive win. Because yeah, I, think I, it's I said, I said, when I say Hugh, I meant you as well. Because City in it. This, thing. this, this new gen Arsenal team is the reason that they they won that game. I think throw back twelve months, definitely eighteen months. Arsenal dropped points in that game, so it is. A they wouldn't have dropped. For them right now, for them right now, hundred percent they would have dropped it. I can tell you this. It's just about trucking along, trucking along, and keep picking up the three points and see where they are in February, March. So that every win is free. If you want to be in any title race, Tobes. Every win is massive. Arsenal literally whether played Burnham, that picture. Whether it's Liverpool, they're all Arsenal played that picture last season and beat West Ham to a pulp. That was a 2-0 game, but it could have been a 3-0 game. They even missed a penalty in that game. I'm sorry. If we watch that game for 90 minutes, there is no way on earth that you could you could have fought. Even West, even when West Ham went one love, nothing in me said they were going to win that game because they were out of the game, bro. Can we, can they we, were can out we, of the game. 
Can we real, oh, real gri- can we real Grizz right back in here, right? No, no, man. No, 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 no. You should not be allowed to keep throwing your name in there with Hugh, like as if you won more than one title. You have effectively <laughs> done a Leicester. I have seen more titles than you recently. So don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, if you're going to mention your name, you bring my name in there too, okay? Because I've got, I got five of them bastards and you've only got one. So don't, don't do that again. I didn't like that. Wow. I ain't, bring, I, ain't, I ain't bringing the fire at midnight, man. Come on, allow this. It's past midnight. Nah, it's, it's, a new, it's, a new it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. You got you there. You got you there. Oh, you sh- oh, like please it. stop it! Stop it! No, wait, I'm, I'm just, I'm just adjudicating. I'm just, you know, it's I'm a new day. Yeah, that's all you're good for right now. Adjudicate. <laughs> oh, what are you? What are you good for? About me and Hugh only know what it's like to do. Piss off, man! You took that one to heart, didn't you? Shit, you took that one to heart. This is local fan you got, man. One title. It's a new day, man. It's a new day. It's past midnight. It's a new day. Match day. Hold on. Let me tweet. Match day. Before we move on to prediction, I hope we have to win, man. You I want to win. So many Twitter accounts have been taken to prison after that one. Hashtag match day. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny, like? <laughs> because so many people do it, and it's fucking weird. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's so cringe, man. But I don't get mad. it. Let's get the super chats in and let's do the predictions because we are past midnight here, it's five minutes to two hours now. Ryan says, big up the original six as usual, but Turkish, and I think we need two midfielders, a winger and a centre forward. But if we get Mudrik with Felix on loan with an option to buy, maybe I'd sacrifice one midfielder. I can't believe it, but I'm Arteta in now. I think it's all in out thing. It's, it's all a hype. You, you, it's just stay away from that. If you have doubts, you have doubts. You say you have doubts. If you believe, you say you believe. You know, saying Arteta in, Arteta out, saying anything in and out. I think it's run its course now. I think it's become more a gimmick than than anything else. Philippe says people should worry about us. We're not on. We're only going to get better. I don't think we'll get top four just yet. We're looking dangerous. Big up Turkish and crew. Obviously, Philippe is a Newcastle fan. I did want to touch on Newcastle today, but because of the time, we'll save that for the next one. Um, and there's one more here on no, a couple more. Arteta will convert Felix as a left CM when Jesus is back. I'm just surprised how none of you see that. Odegaard and Felix and two attacking eights like Pep and Jason. Fabianski is still a gunner. Matisse, Matisse, these ones. <laughs> Man's touching the sign. Match day. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go like that tweet. Match no, day. <laughs> no. Jason said, Fabianski is still a gunner. Spotted us on that second goal. Yeah, that second goal is wow. Four cool from him. Um, who we got next? Brighton away. Listen, it's going to be a tough game. Um, it's definitely a test, but it's going to be a tough game. Um, Brighton have been doing well this season. I think they're seventh in the league off the top of my head. But one thing is they ain't got Casado and they ain't got McAllister. So um, that's two big losses for them in midfield, whereas our midfield is fit, firing, fluid. Um, at the hey, top McAllister of... back here? No. Nah. Oh, you lucky shit. What a no. surprise. I don't think any Argentinians are back yet. Yeah, just um, Sancho might play, but other than that, yeah. So I'm going 2-1 Arsenal. I think it'd be a tight game, a tough game. But yeah, I think we should pull it out of the bag. Considering our form and, and most of our players are there, aside from Jesus. Um, you? 3 1 Arsenal. 3 1. Played. Um, I'm going to go with Arsenal to win 2 1. 2 1 as well. Grizz? 2 0. Arsenal. 3 0. Tobes? 2 1. Arsenal. 2 1. And Matisse? Um, 2-0 Arsenal 2-0 everyone going for an away Arsenal win a um, couple more to get through it's Chelsea Bournemouth 2-0 Man United 3 Forest 0 not much uh, to read dead, 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 dead teams dead games game. yeah, yeah. So, um, Wolves Wolves away Saeed yeah on? listen on paper where they are in the league it sounds an easy game but we've we've, we've, we've not struggled there but it's always been a tough tough away day and that win that they won, I watched the second half of the Everton game. And I thought Everton were more the one likely to win. And then they got a last-minute winner. It was a massive, massive confidence boost for their team. Um, and I always think at home, it's going to be a difficult one. The new manager, first game at his, his new ground, the crowd will be up for it. And we've had this before where 
good evening came, first game, and then they won that game. So, yeah, and that was the last loss we've had. So, I think it's going to be a tough game, but I think we should get the win, man. Um, I'm going to go with 3 1 Man United. Straight in, 3 1 Man United. 3 1, let's go. Grizz. Where is it? At Wolves? Yeah. Yeah. Molyneux. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say 2 0. I'm going for 2 0s everywhere. 2 0 United, yeah. Mm. Tobes. 2 1 United. 2 1. Matisse. Mm, 1 1. Yeah, I like when you're brave. 1 1. <laughs> I've gone 2 1 United. Hugh. 2 1 United. 2-1 United as well. Um, that pretty much wraps up. What's this one here? Howie again says, Turkish, you know the Arsenal-United rivalry. We're taking a full six points of Arsenal this season. Arsenal playing the best football, though, I won't lie. Yeah, listen, if you're confident, you're confident. All I'm saying is, you know, when we're flying top of the league and, and you, you are where you are, losing that to players to Liverpool and saying you're brass, I don't know about being humbled because I think people should be humble over that side. But hey, um, maybe Saeed will learn that over the next couple of years, hopefully. Listen, man, you don't hear what David Honesty is saying, man. You know what I mean? Big things are coming, man. <laughs> no, big things are always coming to United, but big things are no, 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 big things are coming. You know what I mean? When we get that new ownership, man. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. something, something, go on in there. You know what I mean? What, what big things are we Why are you jealous? Because you ain't got new owners coming. Is that why you're jealous, man? No, what no, big things? Up? I'm going to what's up, you man? No, Premier League, no, Premier League no, wins. No big things happening to you. No, it's a myth. I don't need your WhatsApp. Yeah? It's a myth, it's a myth, man. I don't need your because David Honesty has said, watch out, mate. So I, I, met, I, I told him something different and he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Matisse, Nottingham Forest away. They just got sorted by United, obviously, at Old Trafford, but what are you telling me, man? Um, don't, don't long this, don't long this. Come on. I wasn't going to. I'm... Um, I'm a very um, I'm giving. I, I let you guys have to have your have your team's ten hour you know monologue, Number and I one. just I just I just push my team to the side. Um, we, need to, we need to stop that, you know, Turkish as well. No, yeah, next week, yeah, yeah, we got next week. We need I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go two. No Chelsea. Two. No Chelsea. Short and sweet. See? Happy. Who have you not got? Not no, no first away. Oh God, another freebie. There's no freebies in this league, Topes. Well, there is you play those two sides in the league. <laughs> two one Chelsea. That's Liverpool my... Liverpool didn't beat them. Liverpool should have beaten them. No, they didn't, so there's no freebies. It's a freebie for you. Are we good? All right. No. But no. I have it signs no. against one. <laughs> All right then. Two nil. Saeed. Um, I'm gonna go with two 0 Chelsea. Two 0 Grizz. New tactics. Every score two 0 Everyone's got to come through. Two I'm learning nil. from Turkish man. He done three one last. <laughs> I'm doing two 0 Two one Chelsea. Two one. Three one. Three one. Three one. Cool. Ah, uh, that's all the predictions in people. Um, let me just see. Or the super chats are saying city bias says Said football is just it's a just wait till we buck you like OT. Hope your Casemiro best DM in the world shows up. Football is a humbler. And Dio says more money spent by Klopp, but Liverpool fans say Pep the check put gaffer. One billion under Klopp approaching. Um quote can't compete hype, quote biggest club in England. It's not even remotely close to one billion. I don't know where you done your math, son. People come on the net to lie. They just lie. Just nuts. pure lie. Even it's I know from a mile away that figure is crazy. One mm. billion at Liverpool. Nuts. No chance. Right, let me look at the let me bring the prediction table up. So this is what the table was before the World Cup break after game week 16. This is how it looked. <sighs> in a bit, in a bit. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. And this is how it looks now, people. No. Oh. Man. Jarring, man. Saeed, Saeed just makes me sick. sick. Oh, I told you, man. The free P is coming. I told you. I warned you. 
<laughs> the free heat is coming. Free heat is coming. You know, I'm shame on you guys. We're I'm only ready. halfway through, side. You might want to pipe down. Yeah. No, let him talk, mm. man. Let him talk. Let him talk. Listen, I, I'm, I am going to talk, Grace, because you never talk. Because you're always down the bottom, aren't you? <laughs> no, that was rude. No, that was yeah, very. Was that was no. very rude. No, that was very rude. No, no, I'm, 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 no, I'm calm with Said. I like the fake gloves that you lot wore. On. The fake no, gloves. No, that was actually funny. I'm gonna Toby like, Matisse and Hugh. No, the I, gloves. I see you. I see you. That was hilarious. Why you hurt? Why you hurt, Grizz? I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. Put the screen back on our faces so I can see Grizz's face. Yo. I genuinely can't. Why are you hurting huh? Stop. Aye, <laughs> man. Now, for, the audio, for the audio listeners on Spotify, Apple, and all of that, Saeed is now in the lead. 12 correct scores, 70 points. Matisse is on 12 correct scores, but 68 points in second. Hugh, third, 10 correct scores, 65 points. Tobes in fourth with nine correct scores, 62 points. Grizz in fifth, seven correct scores, 61 points. And I am bottom six correct scores, but on 61 points. So, yeah. <laughs> You know how far I was off. <laughs> no, off they you. don't learn. They don't learn. To <laughs> them you know learn how off. far I was off yeah. you, man. A few game weeks ago. <laughs> now I'm one point behind you, Tobes. You, you carry they on. Don't they don't learn. 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 100%. They don't learn. You won't learn. You won't learn this season. Um, but big up, Saeed. Four correct scores is a record. It's a big six record. The previous record was three. A few of us did get three correct scores last season. But four correct scores is mad. So big up Saeed on that one. Madness. Um, and listen, I've just hit 75k. So love for the love, people. Big up, big up. I really appreciate Let's that. Just New Year as well. Perfect. And love for everyone that's subscribed to the official channel. 20k there as well. Perfect. Love for the love, people. Love for the love, people. Make sure you keep on supporting. <laughs> that. <laughs> Let's quickly go around. Hugh, um, get his channel up to 5k, people. If you can do it. And big up Hugh, who, like I said, has slotted in very well following Steve's exit. Um, and as always, Saeed, Grizz, Tobes, Matisse, get their channels up, people. Um, new targets to hit in the new year. So show some love all around. All channel links in the description below. We are back this Sunday because the games are coming thick and fast. There's no respite. Sunday night, 9 p.m. We are back right here. Big Six Originals. So make sure you're here with us. Um, and then, yeah, the schedule will let you know moving forward how it's looking for January, as we always do. Um, hit the like button on your way out. We've, we've well passed 1,000 likes. There's still 5.8K in the building. Um, big show, big love from all of you guys. Um, and we'll, we'll see you again on Sunday. Peace, we're out. The Performance Package 4.0 is here, people. Get a look at this. If you want balls as smooth as Haaland's finishing, make sure you cop this right now and support the Big Six family. And don't say we don't look after you, people. Use code TB620 at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide.